Good evening. I'm Cynthia Smoot. And I'm Chris Cato. Thanks for staying with us for continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. And yes, Ian is still a hurricane some five hours after making landfall. Wow, that is quite a storm, isn't it? Let's get right to uh, Chief Meteorologist Paul Delegato starting off our hour with us. Paul, you've been in this for the long haul, that's for sure. Yeah, we're on it until it goes away. And at this point, it's going to take a while to, to go away. Very strong winds, and, and this has really been a problem right along the core of the hurricane. And this has moved all of Hardy County now. If you're watching me in Wachula right now, I know it's really tough outside. It is pitch black. You've got, it's noisy. You've got creaks in the house. Uh, the shutters are banging back and forth. And all I can say at this point is hang in there. Just get yourself in a spot in the house that's away from windows. Kind of treat it like there's a tornado warning. Now, that's the best idea that I can give. Uh, this too, you know the old saying, this too will pass. This too will pass. I, I, I hope your home is well secured and you can make it through this. We'll, when we look at the, uh, you're saying how, how bad are the winds here? I'd say sustained, probably running about 60 to 80, but there's many spots where there's wind gust over 100. There's no doubt about that. And it's still, for our friends in coastal Manatee and Sarasota County, um, where the phrase is just please, I have, I have five messages in a row that came from this area that said, Paul, make it stop. Please make it stop. And it, there are signs that the weather's improving back here, but it just when something's moving eight miles an hour, it takes a long time for the, for the whole storm to traverse the state. Uh, 15 to 20, and things kind of move along. Eight is not quick at all. The reason why the storm, and we, a lot of you that watch hurricanes, we get a lot of folks at home that pay attention to this stuff, saying that the storm looks weird. And, and I, I agree. What happened here is dry air has kind of spun in from the south side. What's interesting, though, is the models picked up on it because when we were, we were showing you projected rainfall amounts from this storm, the highest amounts were up here. And that kind of picked up on the influx of dry air coming in from the southeast. There's also winds above us are blowing in now from the southwest, kind of inducing some shear. So it's kind of a weird-looking storm. You'd expect this to be over here, but it's not. And I think that's because the dry air is kind of coming in and, and the worst weather's on, on the west side. Well, let's do a little radar trip quickly because I don't want to ignore. I, I know we've got viewers now up in Citrus County. Let's just do a quick radar tour. We'll show the different areas. We'll start with Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco. What we're seeing here is what we've seen all day. Squalls. A break where it's not raining. Rain comes down. Wind blows. Stops. Rain comes. Rain goes. You talk about the old, what are squalls? These are squalls. You get lines of moderate rain whipping to the west with breaks in between. So it stops raining, it picks up, it stops, it picks up. This is going to last a while longer. I don't think any of this is going to be problematic. I mean, you could certainly lose power in some of these squalls. But as far as, like, getting damage to your house, I suppose you can maybe get some shingle damage. But all of you up here are going to be okay. You really, it's a rough night, noisy, windy, but it's going to be fine. We'll head south into Pinellas and into Hillsborough County, and we will show you the situation here. Here is where some of the real heavy rain continues to come in from the west. Multiple areas without power in Pinellas. A buddy of mine uh, earlier messaged me from Seminole, said without power, and you go up to Palm Harbor and Clearwater, uh, like Tarpon, and all the way to Oldsmar, just rounds and rounds of moderate to heavy rain, and inside some of these bands, we get wind gusts 60 to 65 to 70. The core of the hurricane is going to stay probably out of Hillsborough County. That being said, it's not going to be a picnic for the next couple of hours with gusty winds and kind of noisy at your house as well. Hopefully, you don't lose power. We'll move south. We're trying to give you a break in Venice, North Port and Englewood. I know this has been a rough day and night. Think about this. This has been ongoing here in Venice and Englewood since before daybreak. This is a long-lasting event. This is a solid like 16 hours 
where it's been rough in Venice, Englewood, and Northport. Now the core is moving away, but it is still very windy, up and down 41. Anna Maria's had a rough ride. Lido, Sarasota, Holmes Beach, Venice, all of this has been to Osprey. And then we uh, move to the east, and this is where the weather's the worst. It is right here. This doesn't necessarily show winds. It just shows the amount of rain. This is torrential rain, but we know this is the core of the hurricane. As far as the eye goes, what's left of it looks like it's here. Um, and, and this is kind of the, the northern part of what is left of the core of the hurricane. This will continue to weaken. The good news is the weakening process is ongoing. So the wind speeds will start coming down and probably pretty dramatically as more of the circulation is over land. The friction of the land also helps to kind of spin the storm down and the removal of the energy source, which is the water, helps for this to spin down. But this made landfall not as a Cat 1, not as a tropical storm, but a Cat 4. So the wind down process it just it just takes takes a while. So hang in there, Bowling Green, Fort Meade, fr Frostproof. This is going to last a while longer. Let's also, Tyler, can we go ahead and maybe show um, either the Prague. Go ahead and we'll show yeah, how things let's are going. Yeah, let's show the high res. I think that's, that's yeah. good to kind of project out where this is going to be heading. Bear with me a second while I pull it up for you. There you go. So this is the uh, this is the, the future cast, and also as far as flooding around Tampa Bay, uh, I, I know you're you're kind of waiting for this big rush of water to come in from the Gulf. The water's got to come back. But I don't think necessarily we're talking about a big flood event around Tampa Bay. This happened in, in Irma where the water, the water's going to come back and there may be water levels two, three feet above normal. But when a hurricane is moving away from us and not coming at us, I don't think we have any big problems yeah. in Tampa Bay. Yeah, there could be some high water. But I think it's certainly manageable. The big, the big storm surge flooding event already happened, and that, unfortunately, is down by Fort Myers Beach and, and Venice. So let's put this into motion. And uh, you'll notice the winds that will start turning to the northwest eventually tomorrow. And this is the clock, and you can see it's, it's just a slow process. This is Thursday. Uh, early morning, this is 2 o'clock, and then you move into 3 o'clock, and then the weather finally around 3 to 5 is mostly up by Orlando. And I think tomorrow morning when, the, when it's daybreak on, there'll be some significant improvement all in our viewing area. So we'll get through tonight, and then we'll talk about improving weather beginning tomorrow. And then by Friday, uh, is, let's see, tomorrow, yeah, by Friday, the weather should be a, a, a lot better. So we're on this. We'll have more additional radar views and We'll get you through the night. Hang in there. Back to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Paul. We would love to talk about improving weather, weather uh, tomorrow. We can't do that right now. Let's show you earlier today what it looked like in southwest Florida, where Ian made landfall again, coming ashore officially around 3.05 p.m. in the area of Cayo Costa, that's near Sanibel Island. This is from Fort Myers along Estero Boulevard. You can see what the storm surge was doing there, inundating the streets, partially submerging cars. Now, this video was taken this afternoon, too, before the storm surge had even reached its peak. They're still tallying what the levels of water are there. And here's some video from Cape Coral before the storm made landfall. This is footage from Del Suslick. It shows his neighbor's pool screen being ripped away by the wind, which is, if you've seen hurricanes before, you know pool screens are usually one of the first things to go. And considering that the storm surge that was later reported in Cape Coral, you have to wonder if the damage to that home now goes far beyond a pool screen. We'll hope for the best for them. Pool screens get it, don't they? Street cameras show Sanibel Island getting slammed by high winds and flooding this afternoon. And this is before the eye moved ashore, which was just barely north right there of Calle Costa is just north of Sanibel Island. And so that's how close this was. But check out the surge coming in. National Hurricane Center said the landfall, it made landfall, as you've heard Paul and Tyler say, as a Category 4, nearly Category 5 storm, as strong as it can be. Sustained winds at the time of 150 miles an hour, and it's, um, it happens fast. And in Sarasota County tonight, about a quarter million people are in the dark. The county was hit with wind gusts of over 100 miles per hour, a lot of rain, and of course flooding along the coast. Fox 13's Brianna Ardondo has been there all day for us. She joins us live now from Sarasota. And Brianna, we know you've had to shelter for your own safety for much of this evening. Have you been able to get a sense of what the damage is like there in Sarasota County? 
Well, I can tell you that I'm actually standing right next to the doors uh, for the uh, Emergency Operations Center, and we can f see and uh, all the rain that is definitely coming in sideways. We can hear the wind whistling through these doors. Um, and so that just kind of gives you a sense of just how strong uh, this storm is just right outside of this building. And this is a very obviously secure and, and, and um, uh, solid building. So everyone definitely needs to keep remembering to shelter in place and do not go outside and, and find a safe place in the inside of your house right now as this is passing through Sarasota County. Um, in terms of damage reports here within the county, they are definitely starting to continue to roll in uh, just within the last hour. You know, we've been getting updates on power outages. Um, the sheriff's office told us that they've had reports of people calling saying that the roofs have been blown off of houses. Um, tree limbs down. Um, they said that they've also gotten calls um, earlier today about folks who were stuck in their cars while out on the roads um, at some point during this storm. Uh, emergency vehicles are not going out because it is not safe for anyone. Uh, so workers here at the Emergency Operations Center are trying to figure out the best way to respond because of that. Uh, part of that includes having a medical director on hand to jump on a call and then guide residents through any emergencies that they may be going through right now. So it's definitely been a busy day here and night as agencies prepare again for tomorrow. This is going to be an experience for everyone. I would say while you still have cell service, while you still have phone service, call your friends, call your families, and again, always check on your neighbors. We're in this together. Now, power crews are on standby as well as the National Guard, but no one can move into clear roads and check on people until these winds calm down. They're kind of waiting for things to get below that 45 mile an hour um, mark, and they're hoping, uh, really expecting that to happen uh, between 3 or 4 o'clock this uh, tomorrow morning, but they're definitely hoping um, that things will calm down sooner if possible. Um, in terms of power outages, uh, we got an update within the last hour. Uh, it has definitely gone up. It's around 246,000 people who are without power here within the county. That is uh, around 85% of Sarasota County, and that's according to Florida Light and Power. Chris? 85% yeah. of Sarasota County in the dark tonight, and we know for those who stayed, it's going to be a, a long night, but hopefully everyone can hang in there and help will come. It's just a matter, again, as you said, of when the winds die down and it's safe enough for those crews to get out and go into neighborhoods. Thank you, Brianna. Just up by 75, Manatee County still getting battered tonight by high winds and some flooding. This is video taken in Bradenton earlier today. Look at the wind just ripping up that houseboat. And that was in a marina there in Bradenton. Fox 13's Janae Lewis following updates from Manatee. Joining us live, she's downtown tonight. So what's going on now? Does it seem to be getting any better? Cynthia, it's not getting better just yet. We've, of course, been listening to Paul, and we know that it's going to get better. But right now, you can hear those winds continuing to pick up here. And that's really the concern heading into the overnight hours because the winds are bringing down power lines. I just checked before the show, and more than 100,000 people across Manatee County are without power right now. Some good news. I know it doesn't help you if you don't have power in this moment, but there are crews that have already been pre-positioned here before this storm and as soon as they can safely get out here and start damage assessments they're going to be doing that process but just driving around here throughout the day not just in the downtown area but through Bradenton we saw down tree limbs we saw traffic lights that were out we saw signs that were leaning all of this is a concern as well as the possibility for flooding with all of this rain we've been seeing we ran into people that evacuated to downtown Bradenton from Anna Maria Island they're trying to keep their families safe but it's hard for them to see the damage Hurricane Ian is already done here in the state. Uh, scary because we thought we were going to take a direct hit. We always evacuate. Um, we're thankful it went south, but we feel really sorry for the people that are in the direct eye of the storm. And once things get situated in our area and crews are able to begin those assessments and get the lights back on here, emergency crews say they're ready to go help other areas in the path of Hurricane Ian. I just got off the phone with the governor and he said anything we need and obviously I told him if depending on how Manatee County gets hit in the city of Bradenton, we'll be ready to go to our partners to the south and help also. 
Now, power outages are pretty widespread, and one thing emergency management officials discourage people from doing is if you've been in your house all day getting cabin fever, going outside and wanting to explore, don't do that because there are down power lines. You could come across a live power line, and that could have some very serious consequences. I spoke with a spokesperson from Florida Power and Lights just a few moments ago. They tell me that they have 19,000 crews from 30 different states here in Florida, and those crews are here in our area ready to get out here and get the power back on. They are hoping they can begin those assessments in the overnight hours, if not at the very latest. They say as soon as the come, sun comes up, first thing in the morning, they'll be out here working to get power restored. Yep, we are glad they're going to be ready to roll. Thanks so much, Janae Lewis and Bradenton. Paul's joining us at the desk yeah. now. Um, oh, let's look at this first real quick. This is from our Fox Weather camera in Port Charlotte. Some images of the wind you could see just a short time ago. This is near where <laughs> Hurricane Charlie came ashore as a Cat 4 storm. Back in 2004, and Paul, we know that <laughs> landfall for this one, for Ian, really wasn't much different. Same spot. Than Charlie, yeah. Same spot. A little, obviously, kind of a different structure in this hurricane. I think what's good now, at least we're looking for some, some good news. The new 8 o'clock advisory is in, and we expect weakening, and weakening is occurring. It's just, just slow. And, and take a look. Here it is. I think we have it up in the graphics. Uh, top winds now, 115 miles an hour. If you take the output, you can see that. There you go. Uh, 115. Uh, the motion is north-northeast at 8. So the, the tra they don't update the track forecasting uh, at 8 o'clock. They will at 11, but I think at this point, uh, all we're going to do is watch what's left of the center uh, on radar. And we've got a ways to go. If I can walk up, because let's see, by Thursday, by tomorrow at 2 o'clock, it's, it's kind of up by Daytona as a tropical storm. So we do have a ways to go, but I think the worst weather for all of our area is going to be between now and probably daybreak. And once yeah. tomorrow kicks in, will improve. It, and the weather, of course, is going to improve initially here on the West Coast. And we want to get the people in, in Manatee and Sarasota counties a break. It's been a tough day for them. And even Hillsborough and Pinellas will improve, but it's just going to take a while longer. Okay. That's good to hear, though. 115. No, we, the we've winds. gone from 155 to 115. So the, the, the trend is our friend yeah. at this point. We'll take That's a nice it's still yeah. a cat three, though, at, yes. this, at this time. And uh, as you said, now it moves up, and we've got to look out for everyone in Polk County yes. and Highlands County, Hardy County, those areas we'll right there. Do, we'll do. We'll track it live. We'll radar okay. tracking. We'll, we'll do some wind estimates, and we'll get through this together tonight, as we always do. All yeah. right. Thank Sounds you. Good. You're the best. All right. Uh, and speaking of Polk County, you know a lot of people who live along the coast may have gone inland seeking shelter to places like Polk County. But now, of course, as we just showed you there, that county is going to get some of the heaviest rain and some of the strongest wind gusts over the next few hours as we move through the night. And Ian makes this slow crawl up the spine of the state. Fox 13's Craig Patrick is there live at the Polk County Emergency Management Center. And Craig, you know, we've you've been through so many of these. Polk County, it seems like almost any major hurricane that hits the peninsula has to make a visit to Polk County. It certainly does. Many of them do, at least. And at this point, I want to start by showing some video that we shot about an hour ago that just outside the operations center in Winter Haven. This is the point. Again, about an hour ago, give or take, when the winds really started to whip up. And we reached a point in which we were getting sustained gusts in the 30 mile per hour range and then gust up to 50 and 60. So then sustained 30 mile and then gust 50, 60 at one point, 69 miles per hour just a few minutes ago, currently down to the 50 mile per hour range. And that said, let's come back from the video to the lobby, and that brings us to the next illustration. We can't show you what's happening outside because the experts here at the EOC have put down the shutters and have switched to the generators. And this is actually a striking illustration that the experts are saying it is not safe at this point to venture outside. It's time to batten up. Uh, that should be a good signal for many others to do the same as well. And this is a map you find inside the lobby. It shows the track. This was 2004 of uh, Francis Jean, but certainly Charlie, which is looking very familiar 
familiar to us at this point. And keep in mind, as we head into the nerve center, a lot of people remember 2004 and Charlie and drawing some comparisons in their mind in terms of what to expect throughout the night tonight. And there is one point that the experts here want to drive home, and that is Ian is substantially wider, substantially larger. We keep hearing that point over and over again than what we saw in 2004 with Hurricane Charlie. And likewise, a lot of people are thinking back to Hurricane Irma five years ago. Well, it also took a similar track, and they remember the downed power lines and trees and flooding damage they took then. While Irma was a larger storm than Charlie, keep in mind that it moved through relatively quickly compared to what we expect, unfortunately, Ian to do. So we know this is going to be a very long night. The next update, Chris, here is expected uh, before too long, coming up at 10 o'clock. But before we go there, here is some perspective from the Emergency Operations Center Director with respect to power outages in Polk County. Take a look. Every storm is different after Hurricane Irma in 2017. Uh, about 90% of Polk County the next day was without power. So part of our planning has been because of you know the a wind and the flood, um, and as wet as our ground is, we, we anticipate power outages, and they could be longer uh, than normal because of the saturation of the ground. You know, if a tree blows over, it's easier if the ground is wet, and that means the power lines come down with it. And already, in fact, throughout the day, but really within the past 30 to 45 minutes, we're hearing increasing reports of power outages through much of Polk County and many, many more reports, Chris, of trees down and power lines down, as you would expect. Yeah, and on that note, Craig, power outages, I know there are multiple utility companies that provide power in Polk County. Duke Energy is one of them. They're reporting 18,000 yes. outages. That would be to the east of Lakeland. Um, do you know off the top, top of your head a couple of the other electric providers, just so we can track it here? There's Lakeland Electric, I believe. Well... You've got Lakeland and Duke. FPL is to the east, uh, basically, of most of Polk County. But combined, those collectively, we're hearing reports in particular on the eastern half of Polk County at this point. And reports, as you can see on the radar, of substantial rainfall. Of course, winds too, but substantial rainfall with the risk of flooding on the other side of Polk County, northwestern Polk County, and particularly areas around Walker Road, for example, are very susceptible to flooding already. Yeah, as we've seen along the Peace River, too. Okay, Craig Patrick live for us from Polk County. Thanks, Craig. Let's show you another piece of video here from Southwest Florida. One of those things that, well, you know, when there's a major hurricane, Jim Cantori of the Weather Channel, the meteorologist, he's going to be there. And this is what Joe Franco witnessed earlier is uh, Cantori's report out here in Punta Gorda. And you'll see him in the street in a moment. And then along comes... <laughs> A limb like a tumbleweed taking him down there, but he's okay. He's, you know, he's done this so many times, and he gets back up and then uses the um, street sign there for some support. Uh, all is well with Jim Cantori there in Punta Gorda. But you can see how strong those winds were there in Punta Gorda. That is incredible. That was not a reliable pole to hang on to. No, it wasn't. You know, the stop I mean, sign was already down beside yeah, it there. Exactly. But, you know. Uh, he's he's Jim Cantori. That's, That's what right. he does and, and glad he's okay tonight. But it's a scary night for a lot of people across the area. We've also seen video coming out of Naples, which um, the governor earlier said downtown Naples was flooded, flooded, a lot of damage, a lot of wind damage. Yeah, and you know things are bad. When the emergency, when the first responders are in trouble, Naples Fire Rescue, they ran into trouble when their own fire station got flooded. They posted the video on social media. Here it is. Hey guys, it's me again, your favorite hurricane girl over here at Naples. Um, now we have a truck issue and the guys are pushing the truck out of the bay. Because why, Chief? Uh, it seemed like the truck was going to catch on fire. It's smoking and uh, we didn't want the station to burn down. Yep, you just heard the chief say they didn't want the station to burn down, which is why they had to push one of the trucks outside the garage. There was so much smoke. And then there was real concern about the entire building. And they're wading through waist-deep water, removing items from the truck, just trying to salvage what they can as they go. And then here's a look at Sanibel Island. This is a hotel right there along the Gulf of Mexico. As Hurricane Ian came ashore, waves 
flooded the pool first, of course. That's what went first. And much of the surrounding area, this is the area that got, what is it, like a 10 to 12 foot storm surge? Yeah, it was around that, wasn't it, Paul? I'm sure that it was much bigger than that before, before the afternoon was over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really historic. The storm surge they took. This is video from Bill Brown in Fort Myers. And Fort Myers just got leveled with that storm surge. You can see all the water rushing through. Look how high it is up on those trees there. Bill said that was his front lawn, and he's up there on an elevated a second floor uh, balcony or porch as he shoots that video there. Um, again, Fort Myers, very near where the storm made landfall, on, and the worst possible side of it, too, pushing 10 to 12 feet of storm surge in. Fort Myers Beach, that's even closer to where it made landfall. Out there, a barrier island, and you can see this is the Lee County Sheriff's Office Mobile Outreach Center, which is basically a, like a large RV. It, now it's uh, it's Mobile. a it's a it's a it's a boathouse. It's yeah. it's floating off down the street there, uh, not making light of it though. No one was hurt in this. No, none that we've been told anyway. Uh, swept off its foundation by the storm surge there. You don't expect to see something that big and heavy go no. floating by now. If you still have power tonight, you're able to watch this. You're one of the lucky ones. You, still no guarantees. You could still lose power tonight. 1.6 million people have no electricity. That's according to poweroutage.us. It aggregates live power outages all across the country. Now, most of those people, as you might expect, Lee and Charlotte counties, that's, of course, where the storm made landfall. Nearly 90% of the people there have no power. But even Pinellas County, they are about 150,000 homes without power, and that's uh, Duke Power and FPNL, another 31,000 in Hillsborough County. Hillsborough County, of course, spared the brunt of the storm. Doesn't mean there was no damage, though. Fox 13's Aaron Mesmer, he's been um, checking things out, tracking some of the damage for us. So what are you finding out there, Aaron? Well, so far, Cynthia, I think Tampa, uh, folks in Tampa, Tampa leaders all feel a little bit fortunate at this point, especially given what we've seen in the southern part of our viewing area. You know, there's still a uh, Mayor Jane Castro a little bit earlier this evening held a news conference. She discussed how she expected um, some of the worst weather to come in to this part of the region uh, between 8 o'clock and then moving forward throughout the night. But, you know, I think, you know, like I said, given what we saw down south, uh, things haven't been nearly as bad as what was feared a couple of days ago. Let's show you some video that we that we shot earlier this evening as we drove around just kind of surveying some of the damage. Mostly what we would, what we found is uh, down trees, some down power lines. Uh, we found uh, police, Tampa police blocking the road over on uh, near Dale Mabry and Bay to Bay Boulevard. Uh, that is where there was a huge tree that had knocked down several power lines and that's really what, what emergency officials had been warning folks throughout uh, the lead up to this storm. Um, it, that's where the real danger is. Is, is especially if it powers out, you can't sometimes see those down power lines. That's why they don't want you to, to leave, and that, that uh, shelter in place order is in place. Now, prior to us driving around there, we also went to some of the the, uh, the beaches, and we saw you know what's been going on on um, Bayshore Boulevard with the water getting sucked out. This is this is what uh, Mayor Jane Castor said about that a little bit earlier this evening. Take a listen. The water has been pulled out of the bay. We've seen that before um, in past storms. And we had individuals that were going out on Bayshore. Please, please uh, don't do that. Um, shelter in place. Stay away. These winds are blowing. Things are, uh, debris is flying through the air. Yeah, and that is uh, pretty much explains what we saw. Uh, you know, th there's some down power lines, trees, things flying through the air. Um, but as you heard her say right there, don't go out into that uh, the, the beach area. Well, what looks like a beach, but really is uh, the uh, you know old Hillsborough Bay there, or old Tampa Bay. Excuse me. What you're looking at here is uh, Ben T. Davis Beach. Normally, that that part of the region is completely covered uh, in in uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, when we were there, it looked like it did over on Bayshore Boulevard, where the water had been drained out of old, uh, of uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, by Hurricane Ian, but as as Mayor Castor said, eventually that water is going to come back, and that's why Cynthia police were out telling people to get off the beach, go home, stay in, stay indoors, and don't come out until this is passed. Exactly. Tomorrow's another day. There's plenty of time to stay home tonight. That's for sure. Thank you so much, yeah. Aaron. And in fact, um, TPD just tweeted a couple minutes ago. They said stay off the roads, mm -hmm. and they gave an example. They said a light 
came crashing down wow. in front of a car unexpectedly in yeah. Ybor City and that there are live wires down with it. So there you are driving around and that happens. Then you get the intersections and those those lights are swaying back and forth exactly. and you're waiting for them to fall. Right. Well, uh, Tyler and I have been working hard. It's The problem as far as wind speeds go, there's not a lot of official weather stations that we can kind of grab onto. And the weather stations that we do have, a lot of them are having transmission problems, obviously data problems. So we kind of want to get a sense of what the winds are. Tyler is back in the weather center behind me. We can pop up radar real quick. We'll show you where the strongest winds are. We know they are in sections of Highlands, Hardy and DeSoto. This is what is left of kind of the core of the hurricane. And people say, what's the core? It's kind of like the, the, wet, the remnants of the eye wall. So we know the strongest winds are here. We just checked the observations at the airport in Tampa, Tampa International, which is still reporting data. They've had gusts pretty much for the past six hours, about 55 to 60. So around Hillsborough and Pinellas counties, it looks like the peak gusts from this event are going to be around 60, maybe 65 miles an hour. Tyler has his mic on. Tyler, why don't you read down some other... Uh, wind speeds. Yeah, it's interesting, Paul. You know, we talk about the core of the storm kind of collapsing and the wind speed spreading out. I I'm noticing that a lot of these bands uh, moving away from the center of the storm, kind of going through northern Polk County and pivoting back into eastern Hillsborough County. A lot of wind observations along and north of 60, Highway 60, that are 60 to 80 miles per hour. Lakeland Linder, 62 mile per hour gust. Uh, just south of the Parkway, a station recorded an 81 mile per hour gust. You got a 64-mile-an-hour gust just north and east of Bartow and some big winds in southern Polk County as well. The observation station's obviously never going to capture the peak of, of some of these winds just because they're an isolated point on the map just west of Fort Meade, 57 at last check. And these are updating every 10 or 15 minutes. Had a 53 in Frostproof, 54 just east of Avon Park. And, and even over into central Hillsborough County, uh, I've seen wind gusts still 50 to 60 miles per hour. McDill, 55, 53 downtown St. Pete. Um, so this is not just that core of wind. All of this is kind of spreading outward from that center. And some of those bands especially, man, in central Polk County really packing a punch right now, Paul. Yeah, and, and what we're expecting going forward, and, and I kind of watching all the questions come in, what are we going to expect the rest of the night? In our big population base of Hillsborough and Pinellas, it's essentially going to be tropical storm conditions the rest of tonight. I don't think we'll see winds in excess of 74, 75 miles an hour. There'll be some gusts and some squalls, 65, 70, but the hurricane now is past Hillsborough and Pinellas. It is now moving away from us, and we are on the west side of it. It is going to be a noisy, rough night, and I think at this juncture, the hope here is for you not to lose power and not to get some sort of tree damage uh, on your roof or on your structures. That's probably the takeaway for tonight. Rainy, kind of loud, often on heavy rain. And as we move to the south into Sarasota and Venice County, Venice County, Sarasota County, Manatee County, is for improvement uh, later on tonight. This has been a long road. And this is a storm that people will talk about forever because not only because how bad it was, but the duration. This was ongoing along the coast before daybreak this morning. Only now is the heaviest weather moving away from 75 and 41 with some improvement showing up. But the process is slow. The good news is every minute that goes by, the storm is weakening. It's, it's over land. It's away from the water source. Hold on one second. And then uh, the friction of the land is making it spin down. Tyler. Yeah, I just noticed a 86 mile an hour wind gust in, in Sebring. That's significant because it yeah. kind of gives us an idea of that core we were talking about. I think that's what we expected. Yeah. It was about 80 to 90. Yeah, if you, if you noticed a big gust, that was at 820, so that was, what, 14 minutes ago. If you had a big gust there in Sebring, that was that was 86. That yeah, the well, top winds of the hurricane are, are 115. They have to be someplace. And this yeah. is where the worst weather is. So inside here is where we're going to get 80 to 90. And then gusts could go a bit above that. And that's going to move in to Polk County, especially eastern Polk County. So it is going to be a rough, let's see what time is now. It's 8.35. The improvement, the improvement here is going to be about four to five hours from now. And then it's going to be longer inland. So I would say around daybreak is when everybody 
is going to notice huge improvement, even our, even our eastern counties. But this is going to be really tough going, folks, for the next several hours. Anywhere from eastern Manatee County, eastern Sarasota, all of Highlands, all of DeSoto County, in all of Hardy County. The next four, five, six hours are going to be really, really tough. And this really brings back, <laughs> brings back Irma memories of being with you at night, trying to fine tune all these numbers. This is all going to move also into Polk County, Dundee, Bartow Lake, Wales, Fort Meade. We're going to track that progress next couple of hours. Back to you. All righty. Thank you so much, Paul. Now, an Air Force C-130 Hurricane Hunter plane made its way into the eye wall of Ian early this morning. One of the pilots called it the worst flight he's ever experienced doing that. Fox's Madison Scarpino is in Biloxi, Mississippi tonight, where the weather is a tad better, I would say, Madison. And um, I can't wait for you to describe this for our viewers, because I heard you earlier, and I guess it was your first... Your first oh, time yeah, you've done this? Oh, yeah, this was my first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never done this before. I think pretty much, you know, all the other media there, they have never done it before either. I don't know if I would do it again. It was definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but we were on board that nine-hour mission, literally into the eye of Hurricane Ian. Safe to say it was not smooth sailing the entire time. There was even a moment where we dropped 1,200 feet in just a matter of seconds. Watch this. Just to give you an idea of what we were dealing with, here's some of the video shot during some of the terrible turbulence and what the crew called some of the worst weather they've ever seen. And taking off from the Air Force Base in Biloxi after that, the aircraft went in and out of the eye wall heading towards Florida four separate times. Turbulence was moderate initially, but after a few go-arounds, it became nearly out of control, and the pilot called it a, quote, war story. The crew went on to say that the turbulence we all felt was was not normal at all for these hurricane hunter flights and it's clear this isn't your average hurricane as well while this mission is dangerous it's incredibly important because going into the center of the storm is the only way the national hurricane center can get this critical data like wind speed where the storm is and how strong it is we got rocked I like to say like a boxer uh, the aircraft was uh basically overmatched at one point. Uh, we were max power, uh, trying to gain speed. We were basically diving, losing air. It, it was a mess. It, it was the worst thing you could uh, want to happen as a pilot. These flights have been running multiple times a day since over the weekend, but the last scheduled mission just landed a few hours ago. Cynthia? All right, Madison, and you know, I always thought that'd be a cool thing to do until I heard your story tonight and heard that pilot. So I'm thinking... <laughs> I'm thinking I'm cool with, you know. It is cool. It's, 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 I'm happy I did it for sure. But <laughs> if you got a weak stomach, if you don't like roller coasters, it's not, not the thing for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. But thank goodness that they do what they do for us. Thank you. Madison's Absolutely. Perfume. Yes. Can't eat a big lunch before you go on a flight like that. That's for sure. We, we appreciate all the work those hurricane hunters do. All right. Earlier today, you heard the governor say that he's requested from President Biden a major disaster declaration for all of Florida. 67 counties. If granted, which we expect it, it will be, that would open up federal assistance programs and it's important to get that money flowing as soon as possible because there's going to be so much cleanup and recovery. Now, a short time ago, the governor held his latest briefing on the storm. Uh, Hurricane Ian made landfall this afternoon in southwest Florida uh, and it is battering uh, areas in southwest Florida, Lee, Charlotte, uh, and counties even beyond that. Uh, we have seen uh, life-threatening storm surge, uh, as was predicted. Uh, we've also seen major flooding in places like Collier County, Sanibel, Fort Myers Beach. Uh, you're also seeing inland flooding because of the inundation that you're seeing. So some of the counties in the interior of the state uh, are seeing uh, major water events as well. Uh, we do know that Lee, Hendry, and Glades, 9 911 call centers are being rerouted. Those comms are down, uh, so calls are being answered, and teams uh, are in the people that are calling are being noted. And then those local first responders uh, will deploy um, as soon as it's safe uh, to do so. Now, obviously, local 
uh, responders can make make decisions. But by and large, uh, until the storm passes, you know, they are not going to go into a situation uh, for rescue uh, and put their own folks um, at risk. And so we know that there are folks who are in the really high risk zone A evacuation zones uh, who did not evacuate. Uh, some have called in and those people are being uh, logged and there will be a response, uh, but it's likely going to take uh, a little time for this storm to move forward so that it's safe for the first responders uh, to be able to do. Uh, we are getting reports, uh, but it's going to take a little bit more time to know exactly in terms of structural damage, but we are getting some reports of structural damage in both Lee and, and Charlotte counties, but I would say overwhelmingly uh, it's been that surge that has been the, the, the biggest issue uh, and the flooding uh, that has resulted as a result of that. In some areas, uh, we think it's hit 12 feet. Now, it is our meteorologist's view that the storm surge has likely peaked and, and, and will likely, uh, you know, be be less in the in the coming hours than it has been up to this point. Uh, but we know that this has been a, a big storm, and and it's done a, a lot of damage uh, as it is. It is going to continue to move through the state of Florida. Uh, you're going to see hurricane force winds in places in central Florida, perhaps. Uh, it's clearly a very strong tropical storm all the way until it exits the Florida Peninsula in the Atlantic uh, Atlantic Ocean. There there are, as much as we're focused on Southwest Florida, very important, obviously, when you have a storm of this nature. Uh, I think at landfall, it's going to be behind only the Labor Day hurricane, Hurricane Andrew and Hurricane Michael in terms of intensity. Uh, I think we're going to end up seeing that. It may end up being a Category 5, but at a minimum, it's going to be a very strong Category 4 that's going to rank as one of the top five hurricanes to ever hit the Florida Peninsula. So, so that damage is, is ongoing. It's very, very important. Uh, but the fact is, there's going to be damage throughout the whole state, and people in other parts of the state uh, be prepared for some impacts. And you are seeing counties in different parts of the state uh, issue evacuation orders. Uh, Clay County in northeast Florida, which we do anticipate some major, major flooding events in northeast Florida. I think folks that are familiar with the St. Johns River know uh, that when you have weather like this, you will see this. And so Clay County has issued mandatory evacuations of low-lying areas along the St. Johns River. Uh, Flagler County has issued mandatory evacuations of its barrier islands, low-lying areas, and mobile homes. Nassau has issued evacuation orders for low-lying areas. St. Johns County is evacuating coastal and low-lying areas, including the city of St. Augustine, as well as the city of St. Augustine Beach. Uh, Putnam County has recommended a evacuation for low-lying areas and areas that have a history of flooding, and Sumter County is advising evacuations of mobile homes. And so those are places that are hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the initial impact in southwest Florida, and yet they are having uh, to evacuate folks that are living in vulnerable areas. And that, again, is Governor DeSantis from his latest briefing earlier this evening. Now, we've been showing you, you can see the radar right there on the picture-in-picture picture on your screen. And just see what a wide area of the state is being affected by this hurricane, which, again, uh, as of a few minutes ago, was still a Category 3 storm, even though it is pretty well inland now, a massive storm. The governor said it's going to be one of the top five strongest to hit. Florida on record. Fox 13's Regina Gonzalez is in Tampa with a look at how conditions are there where you are, Regina, and also some things that have been recorded around the state. Yeah, good evening, Chris. So I'm here in Tampa right now. You can see the wind really picking up, gusting behind me. Uh, a lot of sideways rain right now, but uh, very mild compared to the devastation that our neighbors to the south are continuing to see right now. And as we continue to show you all the video coming in, I did want to walk you through uh, some that have definitely stuck out to us. Uh, so I do want to start with uh, a video that we are getting from Lee County, Florida. So that's in the Fort Myers area, Fort 
Fort Myers is their county seat. Uh, this is a video that the Lee County Sheriff's Office posted to social media as uh, one of their mobile trailers floated away in the storm surge. They said this was one of their temporary outreach centers and it was disconnected from its foundation. So it really just shows you how powerful this water is. I can't imagine how heavy uh, that structure was and I'm sure it's filled with some sort of supplies. Uh, so we're going to work to get more information on that. We also have another video coming from Sanibel Island, Florida. Uh, this is showing rain from Hurricane Ian seeping into a hotel after you could see the front door started to break. Now, uh, you'll eventually see people trying to seal it shut. Uh, many either stayed in these hotels for shelter after they simply couldn't evacuate in time uh, when learning that Ian had shifted east. So not a lot of time to prepare for some of these travelers, especially. And when uh, you speak about travelers, like you said, Chris, this is impacting uh, our entire region, even to the northeast. So I want to bring you out to Orlando International Airport. That's where dozens of passengers were stranded today as they shut down their operations and everybody in the airport was evacuated. Uh, stores had gates up on them. Uh, there were check-in lanes that were completely empty. The only ones left were stuck because their flights were canceled and even they were asked to leave and take shelter. An airport employee actually went around to clusters of passengers telling them to move to the food court where they would then be bused to shelters. Uh, people trying to escape the storm were incredibly frustrated and I'm sure uh, that was a lot of people visiting theme parks. You've got Disney World and Universal that officially shut down as of today. Uh, so when you talk about airports and you talk about travel now here in Tampa Bay, I was uh, talking yesterday about how Tampa International officially suspended commercial flights. They shut down. Uh, there's 120 storm riders, uh, electricians, plumbers that are going to be riding this out in the facility so they could restore uh, power, electricity, anything that were to happen there. And as far as reopening dates for Tampa, Bradenton, Sarasota, Clearwater, St. Pete, uh, that is all to be determined. All of these officials said uh, that they are going to give reopening dates once assessments of damage are done to the grounds. Uh, there could be situations where the tarmac is fine, but the terminal is not, vice versa. Uh, so really, it is just a waiting game here, Chris, for everybody. It really is, and the wait's going to be much longer, of course, for people who live in Lee, Charlotte, those counties where the storm was, the winds were the strongest, where the most storm surge hit. It's going to be a long, long process, and so we're going to be uh, watching that, especially tomorrow when the sun comes up and we can kind of see what was left behind. Uh, thank you, Regina Gonzalez, live for us tonight in Tampa. We are also quite mindful of the fact that what we saw play out earlier today at Fort Myers Beach and those very islands is what we originally were expecting here in the Tampa Bay area that yeah. we thought was going to happen here. We've talked many times, our meteorologists Tyler and Paul have, about the scenario that would have to occur for there to be tremendous flooding. We know how vulnerable uh, the Tampa Bay area is, and, and this was that scenario. It, 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 it could have been could have been our storm rather than Fort Myers being underwater. Uh, but no, instead, water was actually getting pushed out of the bay. It wasn't storm surge. It was storm suck, I guess, that we were seeing. If you look at this time lapse here, and we've shown this over and over, but it bears looking at again from Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa. This is Hillsborough Bay, and you can see with the time lapse how the water is going out. And as Tyler and Paul have explained, this is because the winds were blowing from the northeast and pushing the water out. And people were actually, although police advised against it, getting down off of the sidewalk on Bayshore Boulevard, walking down the little balustrade there and walking out onto where the bay was. And of course, the big question now for a lot of people have is, so when the water comes back, what happens? Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, Paul and I were talking about this earlier. That it's it's not quite the same dynamic when you have a wind switching around on the back side of the storm as it is when the storm's coming at you. When it's moving away from us, yeah, you get a wind switch and it's kind of a west wind, but it, the water kind of comes back. Maybe you get a foot, foot or two above normal tide levels, and that's yeah. kind of the extent of it. It doesn't all come rushing exactly. back at once. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's talk about rainfall totals. I yes. think that's one thing we're seeing now. Mm -hmm. You guys were showing some numbers earlier that were kind of mind-blowing down around yeah. Venice and that area, 15 inches, right? The, there's going to be a swath in some counties where it goes from two or three inch totals to two feet. Yeah. over the span of 10, 15 miles, and that's it's really a tight window. And unfortunately, some of this rain, like eight, nine inches of rain in three hours in spots in Hardy County, there's a flash flood warning out. I mean, the water just comes up so quick. Folks hopefully have sandbags and can keep it out of the house, but 
it's not over for several more hours, and we're going to just keep tacking on the inches. So it's it's not a good situation. Freshwater flooding will be an issue yeah. it, it, days after the storm. Mm -hmm. Yes, as the, all of that comes downstream. A lot of our river numbers, our river gauges, have recorded numbers since the 30s and 40s, and most of the numbers will surpass their record levels that we've ever had. Those river mm -hmm. gauges. The next couple. And, and I'm wondering because tomorrow, you know, once the sun comes up, mm -hmm. we may get our first look at some of the damage. Um, where are you expecting to see the worst damage in terms of structures, yeah. homes, things like that? Uh, you know, I think first off, it's it's southwest Florida down in down in Fort Myers. I mean, we've seen it today where the water's up to rooftops, and mm -hmm. I, I think until you see that with your own eyes, you don't realize that the surge can actually get that high. I mean, 10, 15 feet right. is a lot of water. So it's, it's going to be hard to see some of those images. In our viewing area, it's certainly southern Sarasota County, Northport, Venice, Englewood, uh, for like three hours today, it was 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds, if not higher in those spots. That's structural damage when it was yeah. sustained okay. for that long period of time. Uh, thankfully, all of our viewing area essentially avoided surge issues, but the, the freshwater flooding and the wind problems, big time. Look at the rainfall totals. You see the purple and the white. You wonder what value is that? Approaching 19 inches in, in several of these spots. And you see how it's expanding? This is a two-hour loop, so it kind of shows you where new rain has fallen in the last two hours. That purple, whitish, grayish, swath, if you will, which if you can't see us and you're just listening to us, it extends from Sarasota County uh, up through southeastern Manatee County into parts of Hardy and DeSoto and is now kind of squeezing up into southern Polk County. And when all is said and done, it will go from Venice to Orlando to maybe even Daytona. I mean, it's just going to be this swath of one to two feet of rain, and that is a big, big problem. We'll zoom in on a couple of these areas. Again, I mentioned this is 24-hour rainfall totals, but some of these spots have added eight or nine inches in just the last two or three hours, and that's where the, the flash flood warning comes into play. That is anywhere from southern Sarasota County up through Hardy and DeSoto. Look at some of these numbers, 19 and a half around South Venice. South of I-75 is kind of where we're sampling here in Sarasota County. Northport, over 16 inches of rain uh, up near, say, Mayaka City, 14.4. Last, last I heard, they were still talking about 80 mile an hour gusts uh, in Mayaka City as well. Wachula, 12 and a half, about two Two thirds of that has come in the last two and a half hours. That's a lot of rain in a short period of time for very soggy soil, which can't handle any more water. And as I said, all of this is just going to keep spreading north and east as that core of the storm that we've talked about continues to move north and east. This is kind of interesting. You look at Sebring here. I'm sampling some numbers just east of Sebring. Let's do that. 2.7. All right, you go just west of Sebring, 7.6. That's a span of 10 miles, maybe 10, 15 miles, and it's a five-inch rainfall difference. So huge, huge rain differentials depending on any one location. We'll, we'll pop it back out to radar here for a second. The reason why we've kind of stacked it up in that in that kind of rain corridor that we just showed you is all because of this, this core of heavy rain, which continues to pivot north and east and almost due north now, spreading into southern Polk County. That is where the strongest winds are that we have in our viewing area right now. Uh, about 30 minutes ago, had a wind gust of 81 in Sebring. So kind of just that reddish area is, is the core of the strongest winds. As far north as like Lakeland, just south of Lakeland, in fact, hit an 81 mile per hour wind gust in the last hour. So there's some very strong winds coming into Polk County and a lot of heavy rain. This is still only moving about eight miles an hour, folks. I mean, so this is it's going to take some time to get all of this out of here. It's, it's pretty much going to be now through, I'd say, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., until we can maybe start to see a little improvement. The rain's going to last all night long, but on the back side of this, the winds will gradually diminish overnight, and during the day tomorrow, we should get a little sunshine mixed in, but this is going to be kind of an all-night event and a loud night. I mean, it's 9 o'clock now. Some folks hopefully are going to try and get some sleep in parts of Polk County. You're just kind of hunkered down. I'd definitely be sleeping in the most interior room in your house if you're trying to get a little shut-eye here the next few hours because uh, winds are certainly going to still be possibly gusting 70, 80, 90 miles per hour through a lot of Polk County down into Hardy, uh, DeSoto, and Highlands County as this thing continues to gradually uh, lift off to the north and east. Cynthia? All right, thank you, Tyler. Fox's Madeline Rivera, well, she was in Tampa all day, keeping an eye on the storm. She shows us how Hurricane Ian impacted the state of Florida. Hurricane Ian makes landfall along Florida's Gulf Coast, whipping up catastrophic winds and leaving thousands in the dark. Hurricane 
Hurricane Ian barreling down on southwest Florida Wednesday afternoon. At times, damaging winds topping 150 miles per hour knocked out power for hundreds of thousands of people. On Sanibel Island, gusts pushed a devastating storm surge as Ian moved ashore. The safest thing to do is to find an interior portion of your home without windows, uh, hunker down in that area, uh, away from what could be windborne debris. Ian will slowly trek across the Florida Peninsula, dumping more than a foot of rain over parts of Tampa, Jacksonville, and Orlando. Forecasters say by the time this hurricane leaves, parts of the coast could see storm surge reach 18 feet. People here have prepared for the worst. I've been here 45 years. And this is the first time I left for a storm. The water just really scared me, and as well as the path. The rest of the day we're in. We're not going to be out again until probably Friday. Some emergency response teams paused service as the weather intensified. Florida officials say crews will deploy as soon as conditions allow. We do have some people uh, who've chosen to hunker down in some very vulnerable areas. And so that is going to be something that I know that they're, they're keeping a, a very close eye on. Later this week, forecasters expect Ian to turn north hitting the Georgia and South Carolina coast. In Tampa, Malta Rivera, Fox News. All right, let's thank you, Madeline. Let's continue our coverage now in Hillsborough County. Again, dodging the brunt of this, but we are seeing a lot of debris now because now we're getting some of the stronger wind gusts coming through parts of Hillsborough County. Power outages, too, are ticking up. Let's go out to Fox 13's Haley Hines. She's been monitoring the damage around the county. What's the latest, Haley? Oh, Chris, out here, it's, it's wet and windy and just driving around the eastern part of Hillsborough County. Really, the most of the damage that we're seeing is down trees, large branches, not only causing property damage, but also blocking the road. We'll take you first to uh, Lithia Pinecrest Road. That's just south of Oak Lane Drive there. We saw a large tree had fallen, and it took down several power lines with it there. Uh, it was blocking the northbound lane. You know, that ground just gets so saturated with all this rain. It really does not take much to finally bring some of these trees crashing down. And driving around at this hour, really not the safest thing to do. And this is a big reason why. You have to be so careful. You really don't know what you could come across, whether it's a tree, a large branch, debris, or even live power lines lying across the road. We saw that, too. We were just on Magnolia Drive in Thno de Sassa. The storm brought down a tree from an adjacent property onto a family's carport, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Two cars totaled. They lost two carports, a shed, a back corner of a shop. The family that lives there tells me that, that some of them were out watching from the porch when all of this happened. They're thankful that they're okay. But they say it has been a nerve-wracking and exhausting day, and they're really not looking forward to the next few hours. Well, we've been sitting out on the porch in and out all day, and we hear crashing and banging with the trees around us, and hit for the hills when we're here when we're really close. So we lost power probably half an hour, 45 minutes ago, and we just got the generator up, so hopefully we'll be okay through the night. <laughs> no sleep. Yeah, it won't be a lot of sleep for uh, many people in our area. Uh, we've seen other minor damage around Hillsborough at US 41 and Apollo Beach Boulevard. We spotted an awning on the ground with a bent gutter attached that appeared to have been blown off from a retail building. Not far from there, we came across a fallen railroad crossing gate. So, you know, lots of cleanup tomorrow and in the coming days. We're sure to hear uh, the sound of buzz saws as people work to clean up their yards, to clean up those fallen trees and those large tree branches. But you know, considering those initial forecast tracks of Hurricane Ian and the destruction we could be dealing with right now, especially uh, what many of our friends and family are dealing with down south, uh, certainly all of this damage property damage can be handled much more easily. While it's not fun to deal with, it certainly does give you a great deal of perspective. So we'll be monitoring the conditions around Hillsborough County and we'll keep you updated throughout yeah, the night. Great yes. point there, Haley. Really, all of us in the Tampa area really can't complain when we see what else is going on. All right. Um, stay safe out there. We'll check in with you later. Haley Hines. Mm -hmm.
And don't forget, you can stay up to date with the latest on Ian at MyFoxHurricane.com. That site has everything you need to know about the storm we're tracking with a county-by-county -county guide for all kinds of emergency information. And if you've lost power, if your phone is charged, you can follow us right there on your Fox 13 Tampa Bay app. It says live right up there in the corner. Yeah, you can also, if you have a battery-powered radio and you lose power, you can listen to us. We are simulcasting our live stream on Hot 101.5, 97X, and 102.5, The Bone. And um, again, it, now is a good time, especially if you're in Polk County and Highlands and Hardy and you may lose power, to go ahead and charge those devices and make sure they are fully charged. You are watching our continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian right here on Fox 13. We'll be right back with much more right after this. Connect with Flex, Fox Local Extension. Reach local viewers down to the zip. Across Flex and 150 plus premium partners. We connect the dots, plus serve up unique customer insights to help reach your goal. Connect with Flex. Just because people underestimate you does not mean that your greatness is not showing. Just because they don't call you and they don't celebrate you does not mean that your uniqueness isn't poking through. Because it is. There's something about you that continues to shine even in the midst of the darkness that encroaches and encumbers and the darkness that cannot be denied or avoided. I want you to know that your power is showing and that people see it when they need to see it the most. Keep shining. Hey, it's Dr. Mike. Listen, boosters are available for COVID-19. If you're a candidate and you haven't gotten one, I would do it now. There's a new booster coming out in the fall. We don't know exactly when, but you're going to want to get that as well. So stay safe. I'm Dr. Mike Sirigliano with the Fox Medical. And just as we promised, welcome back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. I'm Chris Cato. I'm Cynthia Smoot. And uh, let's start with the latest from Chief Meteorologist. I'll get that word out. It's late. Paul. Yeah. Usually it's my last name that's tough to say. Uh, it's 105. The good news is the trend is downwind. Uh, we, we've gone from 155 to 105, gone from a Cat 4 to a Cat 2. And this weakening process is probably going to begin to accelerate because the entire circulation, or I should say the top, most of the circulation is now over land, and by tomorrow morning, this is going to actually be a tropical storm uh, passing east of Orlando, so we'll see wind gusts, and it's been a very windy, rough night for most people, especially Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands, Polk County, but even there, the winds will slowly diminish. Uh, no change in the track. Uh, it'll continue to move northeast. We'll update this. The motion is still north-northeast at 8. The pressure continues to go up. So again, we've gone from 155 to 105, but we still have a Category 2 hurricane over the peninsula. But the trend will be by tomorrow, and by tomorrow afternoon, we'll have a, a tropical storm along the east coast. The rainfall amounts are incredible. Again, this is not a picture of the wind. We do know that inside this area, all of Polk, all of Polk County, all of Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands, generally speaking, the wind speeds for you are running about 60 to 70 with a few higher gusts. Even around Tampa Bay, uh, Tyler and I were looking at observations from the Bay and from McDill and from Tampa National. Even there, the winds are slowly coming down, and it, because we're on the west side, too, of the storm, and generally speaking, except for this storm, you know, most of the weather is on the east side, so we will con continue to see these winds around Hillsborough and Pinellas County gradually drop as the night moves along. The weather up in Citrus, Fernando, and Pasco, while there's been squalls going by, it's been fairly manageable. There's a lot of heavy rain East of you, if you're watching us in Inverness and Lacanto, Homosassa, Brooksville, Wikiwachi, Spring Hill, Dade City, Zephyr Hills, Wesley Chapel, some of these bands will kind of pivot to the west uh, and some squalls will go by. That's the weather in the next couple of hours. And again, around Tampa Bay, 
It's going to be like 40, 45 miles an hour. Generally speaking, it's tropical storm weather in both counties, in both Hillsborough and Pinellas, and improvement to our south. The rainfall is off the charts. We were showing you graphics yesterday, and we saw some numbers that admittedly made me and, and my weather team do a double take. I mean, it's not often when you look at model output that are running, that are putting 17, 20, 25 inches of rain on a graphic. But that's what we're looking at is rainfall potential. And then we look at it, let's see what we had so far. And what we're seeing rainfall totals, 19, 18. So those numbers were reasonable. I mean, and this is still raining. So when everything is said and done and we do the storm recap, there's going to be a, a wedge of rainfall totals that it could be in some places over two feet. So we got major flooding issues here in the rivers. And, it's, and this is all going to kind of fill in and move northeast. Can we do rainfall rates? I mean, this is going to show rainfall rates as we go back live, and we'll, we'll do some, some querying on this, uh, which is a little pixel cue, we call it, and see what the numbers are. So in that purple, uh, you've got seven inches per hour. We make a big deal uh, in the summer, we get a thunderstorm, and we'll get rainfall rates two to three inches per hour. That, that's a big deal. We've got seven inch rainfall rates, and I could safely say, Underneath this area, it is raining as hard as you'll probably ever see it rain in your lifetime. I mean, th this is about the top of the scale as far as how hard is it going to rain. The, if, if it was to rain like this for two hours, you're talking over a foot of rain. So this is going to gradually end, but when everything is said and done, we have significant freshwater flooding. Again, the wind is howling. It's noisy. It's disturbing. But when it comes to hurricanes, if you're protected from the wind, you're generally okay. The big killer in hurricanes is not the sound of the wind outside your, your house that's disturbing. It's avoiding water. Storm surge flooding can kill people, and well, hopefully it did not, down by Fort Myers Beach and south of us. But this is the kind of rain that in areas will cause flash flooding around the country and, and, and can, can obviously cause loss of life in cases. So we think as long as you're not around a river that's going to overflow, you'll be okay. But there's going to be a lot of flooding. We'll continue to watch radar trends and watch the weather gradually improve tonight from west to east. And then by daybreak tomorrow, the improving process should accelerate. So still tough going. We'll have more radar updates uh, in a bit. Back to you. Yeah, we do look forward to that improving process tomorrow, Paul. Thank you. And thank you for those rain totals, too. That's incredible. Uh, cleanup will be the order of the day tomorrow for a lot of people. New video here of some trees down in Valrico. This is Hillsborough County, Valrico. Some big ones have fallen, blocking roads, falling on cars. And again, uh, as those winds pick up overnight and into the early morning hours, we'll probably see more of this. And it is driving up the power outages, too, as the core, the strongest winds of Ian uh, move further north now. Well, we've been talking for days about Bay Area rivers, many of them already at flood stage because of all the rain. That was way before Ian. Let's check in right now with Fox 13's Jordan Bowen, who's been monitoring the Peace River. That, of course, flows from Polk County all the way down to Charlotte Harbor. And uh, Jordan, tell us what you're saying. Yeah, Cynthia, we were at the Peace River about an hour ago. Uh, the water level was not as uh, concerning as you might think. It seemed uh, pretty normal. So we made our way down here to downtown Bartow. We're along Central Avenue near Central and Main Street right near the courthouse. The wind gusts have been the big story here tonight. Scott's going to pan over and show you just a little bit of what uh, we've been seeing. Uh, we've witnessed uh, debris scattered all over the street, just piles and piles and piles of leaves, branches. We've seen some big trees branches uh, swept through the streets. And also, there's an awning at the Cookie Jar Bake Shop on Wilson and Main Street. We witnessed that metal awning ripped off by the wind gusts. And I want to show you just some of the debris that we've witnessed whip down the street. This is a shutter here and a piece of metal that ripped down. We watched this whip right down the street here. Now, I want to say that we 
are in a safe location. We're here uh, under a metal, under a concrete building overhang. We have protection on both sides of us, so we can witness the wind gusts here in the street, but we are in a safe location. Seeing this debris like this metal uh, piece from a roof and this shutter is exactly why officials don't want people walking outside uh, the streets. We're making sure to stay back under this overhang uh, to be safe. Uh, but uh, the winds have just been whistling through these buildings and streets here in downtown Bartow. I know we've seen uh, the surprising thing here is the power is still on. It's been on uh, since we've been out here for the last few hours. Uh, but the wind uh, has really just been gusting through these streets. Rain been coming down. We have not seen any uh, real flooding. We saw some high water on some ponds. Uh, the Peace River was up a little bit, but it was not near the bridge. It was still at least 20 feet or so uh, below the bridge where cars drive over. That was about an hour ago, but of course that can change. That's at least the latest here in downtown Bartow. Cynthia? All right. We're, thanks for checking that out for us, Jordan. And you guys uh, continue to be safe out there while you're covering the storm. Yeah. We know one of the hardest hit areas, at least in the Tampa Bay area, is Sarasota County. In fact, you know, last night at this time, Sarasota was looking like a prime spot for landfall, but the track shifted south, but still a lot of widespread damage there, power outages. In fact, most of the county is without power now, at least for the FPL customers. And the emergency operations center is running at full capacity, but after being under assault basically all day from this storm, it appears the worst may be over finally for Sarasota County. Let's check in now with Fox 13's Brianna Arredondo. She's been there all day covering it for us. And so Brianna, what's the story now in Sarasota? Well, you just said it there, Chris. We spoke with the Sarasota County Emergency Management Chief, and he said that the worst is over for Sarasota County when it comes to those high winds and a lot of the damaging things that we saw earlier in the day today. Um, but, of course, the next few hours are going to be really, really important when it comes to seeing just how badly the damage was across the county. Uh, I can tell you, too, that uh, he was mentioning that Venice, in Inglewood, Port Charlotte. Uh, those three areas got the worst of the storm, did a lot of damage, dealing with about 12 feet of storm surge. Uh, the emergency agencies right now uh, they spent the day kind of watching to see how fast this weather was turning uh, and responding when they could, as much as they could, until it was no longer safe to be outside earlier today. Um, a lot of people have been calling uh, the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, uh, trying to figure out you know, when they can come back, uh, wanting checks on their loved ones, but that can't really happen just quite yet. Um, 311, that's the Sarasota County's emergency, or excuse me, that's their uh, information line. Um, they've been answering calls as well all day and night about the storm, just folks who are just trying to get some basic information about what to do. This is a really stressful time for a lot of people, you know, and we wanted to make sure that warnings were heeded and that people could get to a place where that they were safe and secure. So we were ushering people, you know, over to our evacuation centers via the phone, you know, making sure that they understood what the locations were and what the latest updates were here. And we're continuing to get the latest updates here in terms of what's happening at the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, the EM chief, Emergency Management Chief, says that they did lose communication with the southern part of the county, and they're working to restore that. Um, right now, he says the plan is to head out at 3 o'clock in the morning to start their first round of response crews going out. That includes law enforcement agencies, fire rescue, public works, as well as Florida Power and Light to start working on clearing those emergency roads. Um, he says that they're also, of course, very, very concerned about people who uh, may have stayed behind in those mobile home parks. Uh, they're concerned that they may have folks who did not uh, heed those warnings to evacuate. Of course, they're hoping for the best uh, when they go out to start checking some of those neighborhoods and start clearing out some of those roads. Um, they hope that everyone left for safer places. Um, the good news for the coastal areas, though, the chief says that it looks like um, it really didn't have much of a negative effect on the coast line above Charlotte Harbor. Back to you. All right, Brianna Arredondo, live for us in Sarasota. Thank you, Brianna. And this video from Fort Myers Beach, and that, by the way, it would be the Lee County Sheriff's Mobile Outreach Center. It's like a giant RV, and the floodwaters were just too much for it. There it goes, floating down the street. It got swept off its foundation by the storm surge, and um, well, it does kind of make you smile a little bit. Nobody got hurt, <clears throat> but it does show you the power of water 
when a surge is coming in like that? Because you know that it's got to be a heavy vehicle right there. I mean, that is no small vehicle. It is lifts it up and carries it away. Just heading down the street. Yeah. I just want to butt in real quick before we get to this, just to, because I'll forget to do it. Uh, one of our viewers, Kathleen Walton, wanted us to let people know that cell service is out in Dade City. So if anyone's yeah. trying to reach anyone there, that's why you can't get exactly. through to them. And we, we see that when winds come through. You Sometimes you lose cell service and all you have is... Um, Wi-Fi, if you're lucky. Yeah. It's really going to be interesting to see with light of day what, what things look like, especially south of us. Because yeah. um, we're just getting snippets right now, and people really can't go out and do storm, storm surveys sure. in the middle of a hurricane. So we get bits and pieces. But tomorrow, when the weather clears and we get some surveys and some aerials, I think we'll be surprised what we're going to see. It's going to be really bad. Yeah, uh, I think it's yeah. going to be pretty shocking and heartbreaking. Yeah. It's going to be a long Process Long process for a lot of for people, sure. and yeah. again, it's 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 the water. Yeah. I mean, we had so much noise about wind speeds and categories. At the end of the day, uh, it's it's almost always about the water, yeah. whether yeah. it's fresh water flooding, a storm surge. It's crazy flooding. the rain totals you yeah. guys were showing seven earlier. Inches, seven inches per hour, and we'll break in in the summer saying we've got three inches per hour. Right. This is a That's big deal. Right. We got seven inches, which for is about as hard as it, as the atmosphere can rain. And right all that now. has to go somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, it's. I, I think right now the concern is what, on, as you look at this radar. Yeah, I mean, this is it. And again, this this radar, you know, is not picking up wind speeds. But we know the top speed of the hurricane has been diminished. Has, has gone down to 105. That's no picnic, but it's certainly better than Cat 4 155. And the weakening process will just simply accelerate. Uh, the next several hours, and then the storm will jump to the east coast. So I, I can't say we're improving yet because all of that weather still has to move through Polk County. And if you're watching me anywhere in Polk County, and so many of you have messaged me, it's it's they want to know the wind speed. It's on average about 60 to 70, and and it's any town, especially southern Polk County, 60 to 70. There'll be a few higher gusts up to that 105. But again, that 105 that the Hurricane Center is saying, that that's, that's not widespread. That's what they're finding. That's the highest sustained wind speed of any spot. So the chances of you being in that spot are still fairly small. So 60, 70 makes sense. It is not a picnic. But if you're inside a well-built structure, you're going to be okay. Your house is not going to blow away. As bad as it sounds, I think the biggest concern is really a tree. The, if you, we've had so much, we've had so much rain. The ground is saturated. So I hope if you know your little house, you know your your surroundings, your setting, if you will, it may be a spot in your house that feels safer than someplace else. You may say, you know, the front room is removed from the big tree in the back. Let's all gather in the front room away the big tree, away from the big tree in the back. But as far as as a house blowing away. In this type of weather, as ugly as it sounds and unnerving as it sounds, it's not going to happen. Mobile homes are not safe in this kind of weather, but certainly a concrete block home or well-built home is going to survive you. Shingle damage. You know, I, we've been more concerned all along about the storm surge flooding and the freshwater flooding, and that ultimately is going to be the biggest problem from the storm. Yeah. Despite so, despite the, the big wind numbers, yeah, yeah, and it's still a cat what? Cat two. Cat but two. We've gone, we, we've well, and when we see you for the new update at ten, it may be ninety to ninety five. Okay. So it'll steadily drop the almost the entire circulations over land away from the energy source, which is the water. The friction of the land makes it decrease quicker. So it's going to ramp down, and by this time tomorrow, it's a tropical storm off the east coast. All right. So we're heading in the right direction. It's just a process. Can't come soon enough, right? right? Once it's out on water again, could it blossom could we, back it, it into happens, a hurricane? All the time. I mean, could, I mean multiple times, but it's going to move up and then head up to the Carolinas. I was say so. It's probably a tropical storm and then give them some heavy rain and issues. Okay. So storms weakening over land and re-intensifying the weakening over land, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Paul. All right. Windy, rainy, dark night for thousands of people in Pinellas County. Many of them, no power been without power since this morning and unfortunately that's not likely to change at least for the time being at least not until tomorrow fox 13's katherine hawley is at tropicana field to show us why hundreds of trucks are parked here in this lot waiting and ready to hit the streets and start making repairs duke energy tells me that work could start as soon as tomorrow as long as the winds are below 35 miles per hour and in areas that are not flooded 
More than 180,000 Duke Energy customers here in Pinellas County are in the dark tonight. We have seen dozens of intersections with failed street lights, downed wires sparking and smoking, and massive trees falling on lines. Officials say folks need to stay away from power lines that are down or sagging, and they should be considered live and energized, along with anything touching the lines like trees, limbs, or fences. About 10,000 crews have been mobilized from other states and staged at Tropicana Field, the villages in Sumter County, and Ritchie Brothers in Polk County. In each of those locations, there are either hundreds or in some cases literally thousands of trucks that are parked, ready to respond as soon as this uh, storm comes through. And we specifically placed them far enough away so they are away from the storm's path, but close enough so they can rapidly respond as soon as it's safe to do so. However, before power can be restored, crews need to assess the extent of damage to determine what supplies are needed, and that can take a day or more. We're told the first priority for Duke is fixing large power lines and other infrastructure that will get the lights back on to the greatest number of customers the quickest. Now that the sun has set, it is extremely difficult to see downed power lines and debris across the roadways. And so officials are urging everyone to stay home and shelter in place. And if you do happen to go out and come to an intersection with the power lights out, they should be treated as four-way stops. Reporting in St. Petersburg, Catherine Hawley, Fox 13 News. You know, I'm glad she mentioned that. One of our viewers just messaged me and said, hey, remind everyone when the traffic lights are out tomorrow, you got to treat it like a four-way stop. Okay, in Tampa, we've got some, uh, night has fallen, obviously, and for many people, it's dark. Some people have lost power. In fact, uh, let's go out live to Fox 13's Evan Axelbank along Bayshore Boulevard. And Evan, I wanted to, before I get completely to you, I want to share this with viewers because we've had trouble with Tico today, uh, and I know they have other concerns uh, than making sure their website, their outage map is updated, but their outage map is now working, and we can see that there are about 250,000 people Tico customers uh, without power, and that's that's all of Hillsborough County and also part of Dade City there. So we've definitely seen those numbers uh, go up this evening uh, pretty rapidly as the winds pick up as well. Have you seen and what you've uh, seen of Tampa there? Have you seen lights out and, and power outages? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, um, the street that I'm on, the building that I'm uh, using for protection here, uh, this building still has its power on. And looking down the street, of course, this is just anecdotally, um, but the lights are on here, as you can see. And then looking down the block, uh, the power is on um, back uh, there west on Howard Avenue. And then if you look down this way, you can see what we've got here. Uh, definitely some strong, beefy wind. Um, it's been going for four or five hours pretty strongly now, maybe 60, 70 miles an hour, some very strong gusts. But you can see there that the lights are still on there at the uh, intersection of Howard and Bayshore. And maybe more importantly, uh, you can see that we have uh, no flooding here on Bayshore Boulevard and Howard Avenue. So that is certainly a welcome sight given what we have seen um, during past storms, and sometimes not even a hurricane. Uh, sometimes we'll just have a, something like a, even subtropical that comes through, just a depression, and um, you will see that uh, flooding has occurred. In this case, tonight, today, uh, there is not any flooding along Bayshore Boulevard here, so that is a um, major relief. Um, a lot of the people we've been speaking with out here in, uh, uh, in Tampa have had well wishes for people who are far south of us. Obviously, what we're experiencing right now, as difficult as this storm is um, and as uncomfortable as it might be, um, it is nothing compared to what they're having down south. And people I've been speaking with absolutely have well wishes for them because, frankly, Chris, uh, folks in Tampa know that uh, this could have been us. Uh, that could have been us. Us. And uh, we are very relieved here, obviously. That has not happened. Um, that doesn't uh, take away from the, the, the horrible feelings we have for folks down there who have just gone through, um, a, a very, uh, who are going through a very terrible situation. Uh, let's show you what it looked like here on Bayshore Boulevard a little bit earlier today. Um, very different than what we're seeing out of Fort Myers. Dozens of people who uh, wanted to sightsee, who wanted to see for themselves what it looked like when the water gets swept out of the Hillsborough Bay and of Tampa Bay, um, and it goes for hundreds of feet uh, like that. Uh, people wanted to see for themselves. So we watched hundreds of people, uh, well, we watched dozens of people walk out hundreds of feet to see where the water started again. 
Tampa police definitely cracked down on it. It's obviously a safety issue uh, given how unpredictable the water and the wind uh, can be. Police didn't want that to be happening. Police also didn't want cars parked on the grass median here. They came and closed off the area until all sightseers left. Here is how some reacted to the fact that lots have it much worse than people in Tampa do right now. Our prayers and thoughts are with them. We pray that everyone is safe and that they make it through the um, storm. I'm just really, 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 really grateful that it's an hour and a half south of here, and I really send love to the people down there because they're not as safe as we are. We have video of one sightseer who needed help freeing themselves from the mud, which only got worse as the night went on. Eventually, people did get out of uh, that ill-advised spot to be on there on the Hillsborough Bay, which is now dried out. Police have been going up and down Bay Shore to make sure that no one else tries to walk out there. Uh, Chris, of course, the question is also when is the water going to come back in. As Paula said, it's not expected to be anything dangerous when that does happen. And I do want you to see that, oh, he put his flag away, but there is a gentleman walking there with uh, a now wrapped up Tampa Bay Bucks flag. But, oh, there it is a little bit there. He's still supporting the Bucks in the middle of a hurricane. So uh, that tells you, I guess, uh, the, the devotion not only of Tampa Bay Bucks fans, but also that more importantly that this storm is still safe to walk around in. Well, and, and since you um, brought up the sports connection there, I'll mention this, because you have to appreciate lighter moments during terrible situations like this. But we did see a photo going around earlier. I think it was Greg Oman at, uh, Oman at the Tampa Bay Times that sent it out. Someone in Tampa had put, um, to protect their front door from any storm surge, they had put up a Vasilevsky jersey over the I door. I Vasilevsky, yeah, yeah, that was a good... Uh, Nothing. That was a good meme. Um, I guess you have to have a little levity in this situation. Yeah, n nothing gets past him, obviously. All right, and um, the, speaking of memes... Uh, the, the, be before, yeah, uh, b before we go, Chris, um, I said it was safe to walk around, and I want to retract that. It's certainly not safe to walk around. But at least this shows it is possible to right. walk around in. People do. The police do not want. They people don't want walking people around walking like that uh, gentleman did. Um, you know, we're using three sides of a building here for protection. So. Yeah, uh, and you were talking about memes. The young woman who was stuck in the mud uh, walking through the bay. That was almost a, a Florida meme there. So, yeah, yeah don't don't be silly yeah, out I there, mean, people. Just, there's no need to test anything. I mean, there's just no need no. to test anything. You know, we, right. we look at the power this storm has brought. Stay at home, be safe, and you can come out tomorrow and see what's, you know, what, what has yeah. been left behind. Yeah, and be thankful. All right. Evan Axelbank, live for us. We're always thankful for Evan's reporting. Yep. Yeah. So the further away this storm gets, the better off we are. You got it. You're spot on there, Cynthia. You nailed right. it. it just, it's a slow process. I, mean, it, I know. It's I know just it's creeping. It's 9.30. Uh, yeah. Paul and I came on about 1.30 this afternoon, and it seems like, Two days ago, you know, it's, it's well. The landfall took like four hours. Exactly. She just sat there. Landfall was at three o'clock down near uh, <laughs> North Captiva Island. It's moved like 75, 80 miles the since eye then. Took forever yes. to come on. Yeah. Yes. It was crazy. It, yeah. It's it's still rock and roll in a lot of spots. I got both Paul and I's laptops up here. Paul's got his messages up and had a Plant oh boy, City yeah. message. Yeah, pigeon boxes full. Yeah, yeah. It, it's bad. I have the trampoline in my treehouse. Was was the last. Quote hmm. there from yeah. someone in Plant City. So you this mean, is like it blew into the tree. That's what I assume. You know, the, the okay. trampoline in the treehouse. No good for sure. Uh, yeah. Let's let's pop up Sky Tower for you. And it, it hasn't changed a whole lot. The the core of the the wind and the heaviest rain is, is still through parts of Hardy County, extending up into southern Polk County, Fort Meade, over to Frostproof, and then down 27 from there, Avon Park and Sebring. It is just raining to beat the band. We showed you earlier, I'm going to step over the wall here, guys, showed you earlier the, the rainfall rates that we had in, in some of this, kind of in northwestern Highlands County, kind of right in here around Avon Park and back into Hardy County, seven to eight inches of rain per hour. We have had those types of numbers in summertime storms okay. before, but we always preface it by saying, well, at least it's not going to rain for an hour, but you may okay. get two inches of rain in, in 15 minutes or so. This is going to rain for an hour or two hours or three hours. And when all is said and done, 
before you know it, you you got a foot to a foot and a half of rainfall, and those numbers are verifying. In the last three hours, we've gone over 10 inches in parts of Hardy County. Some of the the river levels are are just crazy uh, through the course of the day today. The Manatee River near the Rye Bridge Wilderness Preserve, if you kind of live in that general area in central Manatee County, as we started the day about 9 a.m. this morning, river levels at 5 feet, It's now closing in on 16 feet. It's come up that much in a span of 12 hours or so. That is the kind of river level rise we're going to see on all of our local rivers over the next couple of days. Some spots may peak late tonight. Some spots may peak coming up Friday night into Saturday morning. All of that river flooding and all the flash flooding going to cause huge problems. And it's it's levels that we haven't seen before in some cases. Some of the, the river record levels go all the way back to the 30s and 40s. And in some cases, we're approaching those tonight already. Oh, man. Yeah, we had a Jordan Bowen was out at the Peace River and yep. uh, Bartow earlier. And we right. know that was already a flood stage before right. before this rain fell. So it could be a tough go for anyone who yeah. didn't get out. Uh, there's a... a Peace River Village mobile home community that's yeah. there that always yeah. kind of has problems. So and some are coming up a little bit slower than others. Yeah. In some areas it's very quick. In some areas it's a little it's a little slower. But all of them going to be rising in the coming Everybody's days. Everybody's got to keep an eye out. If it, you it live anywhere in, near a river. Yeah, it, okay. it is improving a bit in spots in western Manatee County and western Sarasota County, which have been just really really hit hard throughout the day today. Seeing some wind gusts earlier just west of Northport, where it was close to 100 miles per hour a few hours ago. Got a wind gust of 50 at last check. Okay. So what's, it's, what's it's the strongest group. recorded wind gust we got today during the, or that you observed other than, you know, the I guess the official landfall? Yeah, well, close to our viewing area, Punta Gorda Airport was 124 was wow. the highest gust that we got there. And we, we certainly saw a lot of that wind, whether we got it at an observation point or not, pivoted over towards Northport and Venice and Englewood. Right. So undoubtedly they had gusts over 100 miles per hour there as well. My goodness. Wow. And we know they don't capture observation points don't yeah. capture all exactly. the gusts. Exactly. So. exactly. Thanks, okay. Tyler. All right, we are getting some more video from Southwest Florida showing conditions as the storm hit Fort Myers Beach and Fort Myers. And are we going to see this? There we go. This is the video, I believe, from the Fort Myers area. We're also getting Punta Gorda, Marco Island, some of the other places. They got walloped by Charlie back in 2004. So, you know, here we go again for them. This storm, though, much larger than Charlie and a slow mover. Um, Charlie just kind of ripped through very quickly. Yeah. This storm, a whole different animal. Everyone has a different personality, right? All, all of them do. And this has been an awful one today. It's going to be awful for people for several days in southwestern, uh, southwest Florida, like Naples here, this neighborhood. Uh, this is inland, too, but still the yards ended up with a lot of flooding uh, and just several hours of rain fell. We saw some huge rainfall totals near Venice of 15 inches earlier, Paul was showing us, and 19 and a half inches even. Uh, And so there's going to be a lot of people underwater for a while after this one. Uh, Sanibel Island, near where Ian made landfall. Look at this, rushing water. This is storm surge. We we were seeing storm surge of 10 to 12 feet. Am I right there, Tyler? 10 to 12 feet uh, right around Punta Gorda, Fort Myers. If not higher. Could could have been higher. I've heard anecdotal reports of uh, near Inglewood getting almost that um, much storm surge. So just remember that this water is loaded with debris. You don't want to be walking through it or, or anything like that. Uh, And you don't know where there are electric lines down. uh, And all kinds of things get picked up by storm surge. We're thinking about all those folks down there, you know, from storm surge to down trees and power lines. In fact, let me just look. 1.8 million, I think, was the latest Mm -hmm. statewide. Statewide, yeah. 1.8 million people without power now. And it's going to be a long haul for a lot of folks. Yeah, just to give you an idea, uh, we checked. Before we started the 8 o'clock hour, it was 175,000 Duke Power customers in Pinellas mm-hmm. and 114,000 FP&L customers. So that together. That's just Pinellas. That's just yeah. Pinellas. That and then we've just got, Pinellas. We know we have 250,000 in the Tampa area now right. with Tico and then so many more, over a million in southwest Florida. Yeah. So. yeah. One of the things we heard the governor say is that all of those crews that have come in from all these other states are poised and ready to go. They just need the clear sign, you know, mm-hmm. that it's safe to go hit the road, and they'll start doing that. Here's what else the governor had to say at his latest hurricane briefing. 
Uh, we have over 1.1 million reported power outages. Now, there are crews that are still working outside of southwest Florida, but just understand uh, that number is going to grow. You're going to see more power outages as this storm moves through the center part of our state and before it exits into the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic coast. Uh, there are 100 portable cell phone towers ready to be deployed uh, into southwest Florida uh, once it is safe to enter and should that be needed. Uh, we want to make sure people are staying out of the way of emergency crews and out of floodwaters and away from all down power lines. As soon as emergency crews can get in, they are going to get in. As soon as it's safe to go and clear the roadways, Florida Department of Transportation is going to go in and clear those roadways. These are all on standby. Uh, they are ready to go. Uh, they understand the importance uh, of, of a really, really quick response. Uh, as I mentioned earlier today, we have now officially sent the letter uh, with the request to the Biden administration for a major disaster declaration for all 67 counties, uh, requesting the federal government do 100 percent reimbursement up front for 60 days to ensure that we can quickly move forward into this response and recovery phase. And I know sometimes they wait till different damage assessments are made, but in this situation, you've got a massive Category 4 storm that um, you, know, you compare Charlie to this, this is way, way, way bigger than Charlie. It was as strong as Charlie coming in, but Charlie was, was much smaller. So, so this is a big one, and I think we all know there's going to be major, major impacts. Uh, we are, not only are there 42,000 linemen, they are positioned all across the state of Florida. As soon as it's safe to go, those power, those personnel are going to go in to, to resume power, and that's something that's very, very important. In terms of rescue efforts, obviously there's robust efforts in each of these counties. I mean, some of these are major counties in our state, like Lee County, Collier County. Uh, yeah, they, they've got great response teams. The state of Florida, you know, we are providing a, a lot of support that's staged and ready to go. Uh, we have over two, we have almost 250 aircraft, more than 1,600 high water vehicles, and more than 300 boats of all drafts and sizes, uh, including 250 already stationed in the major impacted areas and uh, nearly 50 50 that are staged and immediately ready to come in. Uh, and so with water this high, you know, these operations may need to be waterborne operations. Now, there are some where you're going to need to use the water to get to some of the barrier islands anyways. But you look at, like, Collier County, I mean, downtown Naples is flooded. Uh, it's probably going to subside uh, as, as the time goes on, uh, but they're prepared for a lot of different eventualities. So we're thankful for the states that have uh, sent us uh, resources, and we're very, very appreciative of them stepping up and helping Florida. As this storm passes your community... Understand, it's still a very hazardous situation. You're going to have down power lines. Uh, you're going to have a possibility of, uh, of, of harm's way because of standing water, uh, misuse of generators. Uh, I asked the Department of Emergency Management, Kevin, to, to produce for me the rundown of the fatalities through direct impacts of storms versus the aftermath. And in Hurricane Irma, there were seven fatalities directly because of the storm, and there were 77 that were a result of post-storm. And a lot of that is standing water, down power lines, misuse of generators. So uh, please just take precaution. Obviously, a ferocious storm coming in, very hazardous, very ominous. We know the life-threatening nature of that. Uh, but once the storm goes, once there is apparent calm, there are still plenty of hazards out there. So just please make sure that you're taking the proper precautions. Um, I'm happy that... All right, again, that from the governor's news conference earlier this evening. And again, the power outages have gone up now to around 1.8 million across Florida. From the White House, President Biden says he and his administration are doing everything they can to help the areas that have been and that will be affected by Hurricane Ian. Fox's Jackie Heinrich has more. I told each one of them my conversation separately. Whatever they need, I mean this sincerely, whatever they need, contact me directly. And I've, they know how to do that. President Biden called two Democrat mayors and a moderate Republican mayor who are in Hurricane Ian's path, but not Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who's openly feuded with the administration on issues from COVID to immigration. 
Instead, Biden had his FEMA administrator pick up the phone. We do not bring politics into our ability to respond to these disasters. Uh, we are going to support whatever Governor DeSantis asks of us. My regional administrator is with the governor right now, making sure that we're understanding what the needs are. The storm's impact may spread well beyond the Florida coast. The nation's strategic oil reserves, intended for use in emergencies like hurricanes, are already at their lowest levels since 1984, since Biden began selling them to bring down the cost of gas. Officials now don't know if there's enough supply to cover the rest of hurricane season. It all depends on what the impacts from this storm might bring, um, and so we need to do those assessments after the storm passes. Energy vulnerabilities also playing out in Europe. The White House offering support after investigators get to the bottom of underwater leaks in two Nord Stream pipelines running from Russia to Germany. European leaders and experts pointing to evidence of sabotage amid Russia's war in Ukraine. White House officials use the moment to push a green agenda. This just drives home the importance of our efforts to work together to get alternative gas uh, supplies to Europe and to support efforts to reduce gas uh, consumption and accelerate true energy independence by moving to to clean energy economy. Not on the White House agenda, any new mention of crime, even as Republicans lean into new polling showing voters trust them more to handle it by 14 points. Last word from the White House blamed the Trump administration for rising crime that President Biden inherited. At the White House, Jackie Heinrich, Fox News. You know, it's amazing. I saw earlier, I'm sure you did too, is just so many comparisons have been made between Ian and Charlie, yeah. especially Landfall. Uh, the size of the eye of Ian. This, I know, I know what you're going to say. It's, yeah. a good, it's, a good, it's a good story. Go ahead. Uh, you could fit about 10 or 20 Charlie eyes yeah. in the eye of Ian. Charlie was incredible. Um, and and when, in many respects, as bad as it was, we were lucky it just wasn't larger. It just yes. was a little compact, uh, just 40, 25, 30 miles an mm -hmm. hour of damage that just moved across yeah. the state. And if yeah. you weren't in that little wedge, I know here at the TV station, we had nothing. We had nothing. We yeah. had Charlie with 30, 35 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden, if you go to, I remember going a, a week or two later and driving to Arcadia and going through some of the back roads and everything's fine, all of a sudden you hit this damage line oh. and you go, well, well, that's incredible. It was like a Every, big tornado. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. And we use yeah. that analogy a lot. This storm, two and a half times larger wind field, both tropical storm and, and hurricane force winds and about the same wind speed. So obviously a storm like this will bring more storm surge mm. and more damage. Still ongoing now, but thankfully the trends are for it to weaken. It's been a tough night. I mean, I, I look down and, and, and people are on their phones messaging me on, on social media, and I know if you're watching me in Highlands County or, or Hardy DeSoto, it is extremely unnerving outside because it's dark. Uh, you'll hear your shutters bang against your house. Um, you're worried. You're worried about damage. You drive yeah. to. Well, I have to make an insurance claim. I wonder what it looks like outside. There's so much stuff that goes through your head that we're sitting here in this nice, comfy studio, and there are people now watching us that are going through a tough night. So let's not forget that. And you will get through this, and we hope you don't have any sort of damage to your house. Yeah. That's really about it, because you'll make it through. Well, let's yeah. let me show you some radars. And and again, this is this is what's going on now uh, in Highlands County. This is where the the heaviest rain is. But when we look at the radar presentation, I mean, it's it's safe to say that the overall presentation shows a storm that is weakening. Uh, the area of solid red is getting a little bit smaller. And I mean, it has to. The entire circulation now is over land, and it's been over land for a couple of hours. It's not a picnic. And if I had a venture to say, let me get, I'm going to go in front of the wall just so I can point at some stuff. Um, I would say that if you're looking at the worst part of the storm now, it does kind of match up where you have the deeper reds. It's all of this area right here where, and you're saying, what are the winds? It's like 60. To 70, and for the most part, a lot of this is going to be tropical storm force winds. But still, sustained winds of 60, 70 miles an hour is is certainly the type of wind that'll get your attention, and it will get your attention at night. And as the evening moves along, there could be additional areas of, of at least wind gust that go up to 70 or 80. Thankfully. We're not looking at an intensifying hurricane anymore. It is weakening. We'll wait for the next advisory. It was, I think, 105 top winds last hour. And that 105 is probably not widespread. It's probably very localized. Probably 95 or so by the next advisory. And then by this time tomorrow, it's a tropical storm off our east coast. So between now and daybreak is when the weather's going to be the worst. If you're watching me 
in the big urban areas along the coast, definitely improving trend uh, is on the way. You can see some of the rain bands moving south. Finally, the really bad weather is kind of moving out of Manatee and Sarasota counties. And, you know, just for them, it was really about the duration. And it was a solid 10 to 12 hours of hurricane force winds. Tough to take. Usually, you know, a hurricane, usually 15, 20 miles an hour. This one was moving at 8 miles an hour. And around Hillsborough and Pinellas, I don't, you're done with hurricane force winds. So the rest of the overnight, it's going to be about sustained about 40 to 45, maybe a few higher gusts. And later on tonight, probably diminishing to about 30 to 35 with gusts 40 to 45. So it's improving here. Your main concern for a lot of you, if you're watching us on the big TV now on your, in your living room, is can I somehow get through the rest of tonight? I always say it's like it always seems like you have no power through the entire storm, and then it seems like the storm's done. All of a sudden you go, I, lo- I can't believe I lost power now. So let's hope that doesn't happen to you. I've been mean, before, but that's that's what we're looking at now. Is just rain. It's a rainy, wet night with strongest winds here. And if you're watching me, say up by Lakeland and Lake Wales and Bartow and Frostproof, and you're wondering what Haines City, Polk City, what are my wind speeds? That's the question I get on social media. Again, it's like 60 to 70 and a few higher gusts over hurricane force winds. But the really strong winds are kind of confined. Sebring right now is having Avon Park. You're having a tough hour or two to go, and you're really in the heart of the storm right now where there could be gusts up to 90 miles an hour, but again, mostly 60 to 70. Here's the infrared loop, and I mean, you can see the eye not quite as well defined, and the colder cloud tops are still here and here, but not nearly as widespread as they were on the couple of first or the first couple of frames of the imagery. Uh, and then I also want to show you the Brookdale Bayshore cam, just to want to get a sense that there is still some power in places around Tampa Bay. But I will say this, and I, I look at this camera every single night at 10 o'clock, the overall view is brighter. So there's definitely some power, there's definitely some power outages uh, throughout South Tampa. There is, the Bayshore is lit up, but that's pretty dark uh, for our Brookdale Bayshore cam. Um, and, and this is potential, again, additional rainfall uh, as we go through the next couple of hours. And, and obviously, the heaviest rain is now moving away from the West Coast, but this kind of matches up. 10, 15 inches of rain. When everything, is said is, when, everything, when everything is said and done, total rainfall in some places will approach about two to two and a half, not inches, but feet of rain. So we'll continue to kind of babysit this and give you more radar views uh, in a few minutes. But for now, it's back to you. All righty. Thank you so much, Paul. Fox 13's Gloria Gomez, she spent the day at the Hillsborough Emergency Operations Center. It was a pretty, pretty busy day for them, as you can imagine. And here's her report. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor telling the public today that we may have dodged a bullet, but we're not out of the woods yet. She wants people to stay indoors, don't go driving around, don't go looking on Bayshore, just to stay put until emergency officials tell you it's safe to go outdoors. Now, the mayor actually did some visits herself, checking on emergency response crews, letting them know and thanking them for their service, knowing that the moment we get the all clear to start clearing up our streets and roads of any sort of debris or branches or whatever may be out there, that these crews will be ready to go at a moment's notice. Obviously, they want to keep those roads clear for emergency vehicles who may need to respond to people in a state of emergency. So Jane Castor said it was important for them to know that she appreciates them ready to go at any moment. Take a look. People are taking shelter uh, in places that are high and dry and safe. But our city of Tampa team is out here ready to respond to any of our community's needs. So I just want to come out and say thanks to you know the people that really get it done behind the scenes and thank them for their dedication to our community. The mayor also pointed out that we are expected unprecedented rainstorms here, possibly, she said, up to 18 inches with maybe even category one winds. So these are the things to keep in mind. She says we're not out of the woods and we should be prepared for those kind of events coming up shortly. In Tampa, Gloria Gomez, Fox 13 News.
maybe not quite out of the woods, but getting better, improving conditions as the night wears on. And Fox's Madeline R R uh, Rivera, she was in Tampa today for the Fox News Channel, and she filed this report from a Florida perspective. Hurricane Ian makes landfall along Florida's Gulf Coast, whipping up catastrophic winds and leaving thousands in the dark. Hurricane Ian barreling down on southwest Florida Wednesday afternoon. At times, damaging winds topping 150 miles per hour knocked out power for hundreds of thousands of people. On Sanibel Island, gusts pushed a devastating storm surge as Ian moved ashore. The safest thing to do is to find an interior portion of your home without windows, uh, hunker down in that area, uh, away from what could be windborne debris. Ian will slowly trek across the Florida peninsula, dumping more than a foot of rain over parts of Tampa, Jacksonville, and Orlando. Forecasters say by the time this hurricane leaves, parts of the coast could see storm surge reach 18 feet. People here have prepared for the worst. I've been here 45 years, and this is the first time I left for a storm. The water just really scared me, and as well as the path. The rest of the day we're in. We're not going to be out again until probably Friday. Some emergency response teams pause service as the weather intensified. Florida officials say crews will deploy as soon as conditions allow. We do have some people uh, who've chosen to hunker down in some very vulnerable areas. And so that is going to be something that I know that they're they're keeping a, a very close eye on. Later this week, forecasters expect Ian to turn north, hitting the Georgia and South Carolina coasts. In Tampa, Mount Rivera. Fox News. And, uh, great to see Madeline, or it uh, depends on how you look at it. Um, we're, yeah. we're thankful for Madeline's reports in Tampa. That's Usually right. she's our Fox correspondent in Washington, D.C. She was covering uh, the Queen's funeral in London, and now Ian has brought her here. So, uh, You know, we've also seen a lot of video from Naples today, and Naples sits just south of where Ian made landfall. You know, it's just south of Bonita Springs there, and it was hammered by storm surge. Yeah, they got quite a bit of storm surge. I was just looking at some of the uh, postings on Twitter from the fire department, from the city, and I mean, we're talking a big storm surge in the city, so much so that they imposed a curfew immediately, like late this afternoon, and as mm -hmm. far as I know, as far as I can tell, it's still in a effect right now. Lots and lots of street flooding. And even the Naples Fire Department, well, they got in trouble when their fire station flooded. And this is the video they posted on social media. Hey guys, it's me again, your favorite hurricane girl over here at Naples. Um, now we have a truck issue and the guys are pushing the truck out of the bay. Because why, Chief? Uh, it seemed like the truck was going to catch on fire. It was smoking, and uh, we didn't want the station to burn down. So they had to push their truck outside the garage because there was so much smoke coming out of it. They were concerned that the building might burn. And you can see what this was this afternoon, waist deep water as they removed items from the truck, trying to salvage what they could. All right, let's talk power outages now. We've got a live interview standing by. You know, anytime there's a hurricane or a strong storm, there's the potential for losing power. Many people have. At one point, uh, a few minutes ago, we were ahead. Here we are. 1.8 million people in Florida are now without power. Now, that's according to poweroutage.us, which is a website that aggregates data from various utility providers across the country and across the state. Most of those 1.8 million, as you can imagine, are down there in southwest Florida, where the strongest winds came ashore, Lee County, Charlotte County. In fact, I was looking at FPS numbers, Florida Power and Light, basically all of their customers in Lee County are without power. Most of their customers in Sarasota are also uh, without power. About 90% of the customers there have no power. But you know, we have many other power providers uh, in our viewing area here, and we want to learn more about how those companies are getting ready to go out as soon as they can and get those lights back on, get the AC back on for everyone. So joining us now is Anna Gibbs. She's a spokesperson for Duke Energy. Anna, are you with us? I am. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you for being on the line with us. I was just looking at your outage map. Let me get it back up here. Uh, you guys are reporting now about 186,000 in Pinellas County without power. You've got another 22,000 over to the east of Lakeland, like in eastern Polk County. And everyone, of course, when they're affected by this, they want to know when can you get the power back on? 
Sure, absolutely. I know that everybody's anxious to, to get the power back on. So I'll share, as you as you shared those numbers, we serve about 2 million customers throughout the entire state of Florida. In Pinellas, we have over half a million customers. So we serve pretty much everyone in Pinellas County. And as obviously you've been reporting, we are experiencing the hurricane and all of its effects throughout our territory and the customers we serve. So all bucket trucks need to have uh, winds that are below 35 miles an hour. And that's for not just our safety of our crews, but also the safety of our customers. And also the flooding is going to be the other challenge in this particular storm. We are expecting not just, you know, this continuous rain for the flooding and rising waters. Electricity and water do not mix. So we have to be sure that before we turn that power back on, that it is safe to do so. In fact, if you are experiencing those rising waters and flooding within your home, please go ahead and proactively turn off that power at your breaker, which you'll often find in your garage. And that's because if you are in standing water while the electricity is still on, that is a severe hazard to yourself, and it increases the chance of damaging your property, your home. It could be a fire hazard, or it could further damage the electrical equipment that's within your house. All right, and I'm going to, I know you can't put a, Okay, I'm going to try to make you put a time frame on it. How about that? Because uh, you, you did say that you guys serve all of Pinellas County. Um, and we've seen, you know, Pinellas County really got lucky in this and has not had the storm surge. So those issues that could keep power companies out of the air area, like flooding, it, it's not there in Pinellas County. So realistically, and I know the winds have to, to die down, can you kind of ballpark it for us as to when crews might be able to get out to neighborhoods in Pinellas County? So we have meteorologists on staff. They've been watching the storm up, you know, for more than a week, long before it's gotten here. They, they walk us through every single day. So when we were looking at the storm today, it appears that the winds will die down tomorrow. So specifically in Pinellas, that's important because uh, I know that you have viewers throughout the entire Tampa Bay area. So specifically for Pinellas, it looks like we will hopefully get food out sometime tomorrow. But again... As you know, things can be unpredictable. We have to have those winds below 35 miles an hour. But it's also important to understand that every single outage is different. So, for example, a fuse takes up a very quick time to just turn it around and fix that. When you have holes and wires that are down, for example, a wire that may be down, a broken pole that has to be replaced, that takes hours for us to fix. So the most important thing a customer can do so they can stay updated is make sure that your account information is up to date, that we have the right phone number, the right email address, because we would like to get our information to you so you individually know what we call the uh, time of restoration individually for your home. And, again, you can do that with us through email. We can contact you through text or even through a phone call. But, again, okay. we have to have the right information to be able to do that. Okay. And I thank you for spending time with us here, staying up late with us on this night to get this important information out to your customers. You have many of them across the area. Uh, Anna Gibbs, Duke Energy, and best of luck and uh, safe wishes to your crews who are out there tomorrow getting the power back on. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. The Clearwater Marine Aquarium is an evacuation zone A, and of course you can imagine they can't leave. <laughs> so they have a team of people tonight riding out the storm with all those creatures who call CMA home. Folks at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium say getting ready for an event like this is just a reality of living in Florida. So they prepare well in advance. They already have an A team. They're the folks who set up ahead of the storm. The B team, they're the people there tonight making sure that Everybody's safe, human and animal. And then the C team, they, they come in when it's all over to help reopen the aquarium for guests as soon as it's safe. We have the people that feed them, and then should anything happen to them medically, um, I want to be here to take care of them. And they definitely, because we have a rescued population, they all have their own set of needs. And so we just want to make sure that we have all of their bases covered, um, and we're doing the very best for them that we can. The team says all the animals in the aquarium are doing great so far. They're also going to be working to rescue any animals that might need assistance getting back to their homes after the storm. In fact, one of the things I remember reading um, on social media this week is that sometimes manatees will get pushed yes. way inland from the storm surge. Mm -hmm. And we may, have some, we may see some rescues over the next few days about um, 
manatees yeah. that end up somewhere where they shouldn't be, and now they can't get back out. So we, we'll we, let you know. We saw a video of a shark that was pushed inland by the storm surge we earlier, We did. Too. I tweeted that yeah. out yeah. because I thought at first, you know, you got to make sure it's legit, but it really did seem to be legit. I think yeah. somebody just happened to get it. Yeah. So, of course, you can stay up to date with the latest on Ian at myfoxhurricane.com. That site has... All the models, all the info on the storm that we're tracking, and there's a county-by-county county guide for emergency information. I would say shelter locations, but I think we're kind of past that point yeah. now, you know? Yep. And uh, you, of course, are watching our all-night coverage of Hurricane Ian right here on Fox 13. We're going to reset things at the top of the hour, but stay tuned, too, because uh, the meteorologists, Paul and Tyler, they'll get a new uh, track, a new advisory, and they'll be able to show you more where those winds are headed, where the heaviest exactly. rain is. So stay with us. Much more to come right here on Fox 13. My favorite weather term is Virga. It's when you see rain in the distance falling from the cloud, but at the surface, the very lower um, levels of the surface, it actually evaporates. What's really cool is being able to see how the atmosphere changes through the different levels of the atmosphere. And actually the Fox Weather app will allow you to do that. You can actually see a cross section of the storm. Cool to see that for yourself on radar. Truth of the matter is, everybody that you meet in a bar, in a nightclub, cannot necessarily be trusted. Cuteness is not equatable to being trustworthy. You see, trusting someone is a journey, it's not a moment. You gotta live a little, you gotta go through some mountains and some valleys with people and see who they really are in the night season of their lives. Some people have to get to the place where they don't have a reason to support you and yet they still do. And only then will you know that you can trust them. Cause trust is earned, not given. Connect with Flex, Fox Local Extension. Reach local viewers down to the zip. Across Flex and 150 plus premium partners. We connect the dots, plus serve up unique customer insights to help reach your goal. Connectwithflex.com. Have to make a change to your flight? Do not Google the airline's phone number. Imposters are populating search engines with airline phone numbers that connect you to fraudsters who take your credit card information over the phone after citing a fare difference or change fee. The scam isn't entirely new, but with pent-up frustration over soaring cancellations, experts warn consumers are more vulnerable. Your first clue the number may be wrong? The scammers tend to pick up immediately. I'm Steve Noviello. That's my two cents. Spend it wisely. Everybody always asks me about failure. Dr. Sean, what should I do with failure? And what I tell people is that great people fail all the time. Michael Jordan failed, Barack Obama failed, Oprah Winfrey failed. All of them have major failures. You see, the issue isn't getting over failure. It's learning from the failure you've had to deal with. Learn from failure. Let it be your teacher. Let it be the thing that instructs you on how to do it differently. Because the moment you grow will also be the moment you stop having to fail. All oh, this could have been us. Instead, it's Fort Myers, not South Tampa. Estero Boulevard, not Bayshore. This is the storm surge the Bay Area was facing just days ago when Hurricane Ian seemed destined for us here in Tampa Bay. Good evening and thanks again for being with us. I'm Allie Corey. And I'm Mark Wilson. Family members of people down in Fort Myers are confirming now a 20-foot storm surge. Parts of the Bay Area avoiding catastrophe, but other parts, especially south of us, still living through it. Hurricane Ian has ripped through Hardy, DeSoto, and Polk counties hours after coming ashore in southwest Florida. Ian is one of the strongest hurricanes to ever hit Florida, and it will be one for the history books, but we still have quite a kind of tilted northwest. It's kind of a weird setup as far as the way the structure of the storm is. I'll explain that in a sec. Let's take a look around Tampa where I mean, we show this camera every night at 10 o'clock as I start my, my 1020 weathercast. And we obviously often have a lot more light than that. So there's definitely some power outages around South Tampa. But if you look on the downtown Tampa cam, it's still pretty illuminated in many spots. Uh, we've had wind gusts around the city today, about 60 to 65. I don't think we really had any wind gust uh, in the immediate Tampa Bay area above, uh, above hurricane force. It was like 60, 65. We saw some gusts earlier. Very windy today in downtown St. Pete. 
where where the bay is open to the northeast, that wind, as you know, if you're familiar with downtown St. Pete, that wind really whips in from the northeast. Anyone on the pier today, hope you weren't, but I tell you that that would be quite the adventure. So it's it's again, it's and a lot of you picked up on this that usually in tropical situations. The bad weather is over here. There's been a couple things. Been dry air kind of rotating in from the south, and there's a huge high northwest of us. We talked about this uh, during our afternoon broadcast, how over the state today, we went from some of the worst weather on the planet around Tampa Bay to some of the nicest weather in the planet out by Pensacola and Panama City, where there was sunshine, and check this out, dew points in the 30s and temperatures in the mid-70s, and we had this over the peninsula. The trend is, I mean, it's raining, really raining everywhere in our viewing area, and there are squalls that continue to move back to the west and northwest, but the wind speeds in our coastal counties, and thankfully, in coastal Manatee and Sarasota counties, where it was just a rough 12 hours, the winds had diminished quite a bit. Really bad Sebring and Avon Park and moving up into Frostproof, sustained, probably running about 65, some gusts up to 70 to 75. Tyler, do we get the new 10 o'clock in as far as the wind speeds to see if, if they changed? Every hour now we're getting updates, and we get updates not on the track. 100. Still 100. So it was 105 last hour? Correct. So we went from 155 to 100, and the 100 is not widespread. That's probably the top number. So most of you are having winds here, probably actually below hurricane force, probably like 60, 65, gust to 75 to 80, maybe approaching 90. The 100 is probably fairly isolated, but it is a wet night. And rainfall, let me, actually, let me go back on this for a second. Um, we'll, we'll kind of do a little bit of a radar trip. Here's our northern counties where the rain has been just kind of in squalls all day, moving back to the west-northwest. And then around Tampa Bay, uh, the rain continues to kind of spiral in from the east and northeast. Here we go. We'll zoom in to Bradenton and heaviest rain, Lake Wales, Sebring. The rainfall rates here have been unbelievable, running seven to seven and a half inches per hour. And the infrared satellite, the hand satellite, st shows what a, a weakening hurricane looks like as it now moves over land. And then Tyler, let's do some um, let's do some rainfall rates, and then some. We'll do rainfall rates, and then let's go back and do rainfall totals. Some of these rainfall rates here um, have been off the charts. It's still it's still running about two to three inches per hour here. But some of this purple, look at this. This is rain per hour, seven point four, four five point two. Um, 7.3, this is really raining as hard as it possibly can rain. I, I, you can't really get rainfall rates much more than seven inches per hour. This area continues into eastern Polk County, and the concern always has been inland flooding. This will slowly pivot north and northeast and kind of move in tandem. As you move into southern Highlands County, there really isn't much rain at all. Can we take a look at rainfall totals and we'll go back in time? And I think you'll be pretty much amazed by this. And it's how it comes in from the coast. And we'll clear the, the numbers. We'll kind of zoom back out on this. And then you'll look at, at we'll go to Venice and down by Port Charlotte and Arcadia where we saw like 17 to 18 inches per total rainfall. So here near Venice, uh, it is 19.9, 17.9, 16.1. That is, you know, w w we can see rainfall totals like that in, in 24 hours, maybe once every 30 or 40 years. 19.9 um, inches, 20 inches is, is pretty close to the average we should get in an entire almost close to the entire rainy season, 20 inches of rain, maybe a little less than that, all in, in 12 to 24 hours. And this whole area will expand and eventually head up into Polk County. This kind of, it's a little bit south of it, but it kind of matches up with the graphics we showed you last night of that incredible swath of what the models are going 20, 25, 30. We're going, wait, wait, wait a minute. We're not going to 25 inches of rain, will we? It came pretty close, and it continues to kind of fill in as the afternoon or the nighttime rolls around. So we're not going anywhere. We'll, we'll update uh, the track of the storm. Still moving north-northeast, improving weather first on the west coast, and then improving inland later on tonight. Back to you guys.
is in Polk County, strongest of the uh, hurricane force winds. Uh, strongest of the Hurricane Ian's winds are in the county right now, and that's why we have Fox and Kirkpatrick there at the Emergency Operations Center. Craig. Yeah, the weather station just outside is showing readings of sustained winds of 39 miles per hour, gust in the 60 mile per hour range. We saw one a short time ago pegging at 70 miles per hour. That's Winter Haven at near Bartow. So certainly, as we just saw on the radar and in Paul's uh, presentation, the brunt of the storm is now pressing in and through Polk County. And at that point, we have some updated information with a news conference starting as we speak here in the operations center. Without further ado, here's Paul Womble, the director of emergency operations and management in Polk County. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Good evening, everyone. We're still here in our emergency operations center, are fully activated. Uh, we will be through the night and into the day, uh, you know, the days ahead. Uh, right now, we've got over 3,000 people in our shelters, uh, 144 pets, and uh, we've, we're really starting to track power outages now. There's over 115,000 customers without power in Polk County. Uh, that's about a third of the county, and those numbers are slowly going up. Uh, we're really concerned about the significant rainfall. There's currently a flash flood warning in the southeast part of our county, so Fort Meade, Frostproof, Babson Park, uh, the areas along Highway 17 and Highway 27 to our south. So we don't have any confirmed reports uh, around the Peace River yet, but this is the type of rainfall that's falling now, you know, several inches per hour, and the storm just looks like it's really slowed down uh, on the radar, and so folks just really need to hunker down tonight. Heard about the wind, the rain, stay home, the roads are not safe. And don't come out tomorrow until it's safe. It's going to take quite some time. We know we've had lots of trees down. Uh, the bridge on Highway 98 east of Fort Meade between Frostproof, we know there's quite a few very large trees down there. So it'll take time to get the roads open. So just stay home, uh, hunker down, and wait until it's uh, really conditions approve. And that may not be... Uh, until tomorrow night or even into Friday in some parts of the county. Just heard an update from Polk County, and I happen to be right next to a map of Polk that can put some of this in context. Really, it's the southwest quadrant you've heard so much about with the Peace River that flows south toward Fort Meade from Bartow. Here's where an estimated 300 homes are at heightened risk of flooding, and while the Emergency Management Director said they're not seeing flooding right now. He has also repeatedly pointed out that you do have possibly a delayed reaction as the rain works through the creeks and then filters into the river. It could be a day or more before you do see that type of flooding. In addition to that, another key point to watch on the other side of the county, particularly to the north and also to the east, uh, north of Lake Lowry, which would be to the west of Davenport, to the north and west of Haines City. Here's where we also have a point of concern based on a prior history of flooding and the track of the storm. One other eye but one other area to keep your eye on, of course, would be northwest Lakeland as well, though it has not received as much rainfall as other parts of the county in recent weeks. Boy, is it now, and this is an area prone to flooding as well. So those are some of the key points of concern. But, Mark, it's also worth noting that basically all of Polk County, when it faces this kind of rainfall this fast after the ground already being saturated, is in fact at risk of flooding. Craig Patrick with us, Craig. And if it's if it's any consolation, uh, Tyler and Paul are here with us, and we're watching the radar closely. The, the rain is diminishing. We can't say it's over yet <laughs> because there's still yeah. some bands out there. But the good news is, seems with every turn of the radar, of Sky Tower radar, it is getting weaker and weaker from yeah. the rain perspective. So hopefully that continues, and you guys don't have any more flooding there. But we know we'll check back with you a little bit later. Sure. <laughs> Governor DeSantis gave an update on Hurricane Ian this evening, and he requested President Biden grant a major disaster declaration for all 67 counties in Florida and all types of assistance due to the ongoing devastation and the impact of Hurricane Ian. As this storm passes your community, understand it's still a very hazardous situation. You're going to have down power lines. Uh, you're going to have a possibility of uh, of, of harm's way because of standing water, uh, misuse of generators. 
Take a look at this. This isn't the Nonasasa tree from a neighbor's house crashed into a home and a car. Look at that damage. Both are crushed. You know, wind is one of the big dangers from Hurricane Ian and, of course, all the rain that we've been getting as well. No doubt about that. We're going to see a lot more trees down tomorrow. Sarasota County hit hard by this hurricane, though. They started getting strong winds this afternoon. Thousands are without power likely hundreds of thousands at this hour. And when the sun comes up again tomorrow, we're going to see a lot of homes that have been damaged by wind and also by water, especially near the coast. Fox 13's Brianna Ardondo is live at the Emergency Operations Center there in Sarasota. Hi there, Brianna. Uh, what's their biggest concern tonight? Do they know yet much about surge there on coastal Sarasota, or are they still looking at uh, wind damage as a big concern? Yeah, I would say it's definitely a combination of both. We spoke with the emergency management uh, chief about an hour ago, and he told us that, you know, they're concerned not only for folks who uh, lived and may have not evacuated who are living in mobile home parks, but also just anyone who uh, may be in those areas where they know that, you know, there is damage from debris flying or even, you know, some storm surge, and, and especially down in, towards the southern part of the county. Um, their shift is going, their focus is going to be shifting now toward helping those people who maybe stayed behind or did not evacuate and they stayed in their homes. A majority of the county is without power. It's about 255,000 customers from Florida Power and Light. And so as soon as it is safe for them to do so, those crews are going to start going out and trying to work on repairing some of those power lines and getting that power restored. But of course, it is going to take a long time for all of that to happen. Uh, now, let's get to some videos. We can show you exactly what uh, folks have been dealing with. Um, so far tonight, the sheriff's office told us that they got some calls about some roofs being blown off of houses, people stuck in their cars earlier today while they were out on the roads. Um, all through the day and night tonight, workers have been helping residents as much as they can over the phone here at the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, that includes having a medical director kind of walk people through what they would need to do if they are hurt or needed help when they called. Um, the emergency management chief did tell us that they would like to get that first round of responders out here around Sarasota County around 3 o'clock in the morning to start looking at damage. The residents that are at shelters or with friends or family, please wait until daylight and be even beyond daylight. Stay in place. We have a lot of heavy equipment that needs to move. If you drive your personal vehicle on these roadways before we can do our work, you might find yourself with four flat tires. And that is definitely one of their main concerns. It's a lot of the debris that they're going to be finding on these roads. So they really do not want people going out there uh, tomorrow morning until all of that can be cleared and they can get their emergency vehicles through. Um, workers tell us that they uh, also want people who are going to be without power to try their best to stay hydrated and cool. And we know, obviously, tomorrow um, the heat is going to start to kick back up um, once it becomes daylight. And so that is definitely going to be a concern for uh, the emergency responders here at uh, the Sarasota County government. But of course, uh, in terms of just the overall assessment, they know that the worst is over in terms of the storm for Sarasota County, but uh, they are expecting devastating damage, especially down towards the southern part of the county in the Inglewood, Port Charlotte, and Venice areas. Yeah, those wind speeds and uh, watching those, the, watching that surge come in this afternoon, especially the winds, though, as they were watching them all, um, something like we haven't seen here in a long time. So we're going to hope for the best here, Brianna, and uh, wait to see when they turn the lights on. But I know they'll have some help heading their way. We'll check back with you as well in just a bit. Thank you. Well, in Manatee County, well, they started feeling the impacts of Hurricane Ian this afternoon, and it has seen hours of thrashing wind and heavy rain. Our Fox 13's Janae Lewis has been braving it for us in Bradenton tonight. So, Janae, you've been out there for a while now. What would you say are some of the big takeaways from what you've seen? The big concern, Allie, of course, as we've been talking about, the winds here. If there's some good news coming for the people here in Manatee County that have been dealing with this for hours is the winds are finally starting to die down here. But, of course, with the extended rain, the concern is trees coming down. Power lines are already down and being reported in the area, and so crews are not able to come out here at this point. The winds need to be dying down for a sustained period of time before they're able to do so. And just being here and driving around in the area, we saw a lot of that happening throughout the day here. Because of these current conditions, they can't come out, and if 
they can't come out. They certainly don't want you to come out. It's simply not safe. So that means they are sheltering in place until it's safe for them to do so. Then they'll begin the process of damage assessments. Utility crews are hoping to get out as soon as possible. As these winds do continue to die down, they're hoping that that will happen in the overnight or early morning hours so that they can begin restoring power. But we know this is going to be a process. We have teams stationed throughout the state, and as that weather, kind of bad weather, lifts north, as Ian makes its way to the northeast across the state, we'll be able to do more and more and more work in the field throughout our territory. Um, and that's what we're ready to do. We know our customers count on us in times like this, and we're ready to get out there and start reconnecting folks. Now, the hope is that they're able to get out and see where the issues are and begin that process overnight. If not, they say it'll happen first thing in the morning. One impact of these power outages, about 10 to 15 percent of the lift stations here in the county are down. And so one of the first priorities will be to get generators to those stations so that we can maintain the wastewater process here in Manatee County. So until that happens, they're asking people to please conserve water, limit your showers, limit doing things like laundry, washing the dishes and just flushing the toilet so we can just be considerate of everyone until they have an opportunity to get out here make assessments, see what's going on, and make a plan for the next steps. But considering what we've seen out here throughout the day, Allie, things are starting to get better. That is good news. I see a lot of card games in some people's futures. <laughs> Just riding it out. Thanks, Janae. We're going to show you some live pictures now of St. Pete Beach. Uh, the waves are still coming in. It's still bumpy out there. We did hear from St. Pete's Mayor Ken Welch earlier this evening urging residents to stay home until, until the storm passes through. Do not want to be going out there, especially tonight. And here's what some of what he had to say a few moments ago. We want to ask you to shelter in place as the worst parts of Hurricane Ian are still yet before us and heading our way between approximately 5 p.m. and midnight tonight. We will experience tropical storm force winds and rainfall, and we're experiencing power outages throughout the city of St. Petersburg. We ask you to stay at home, be safe tonight, and at first daybreak tomorrow, St. Pete Fire and St. Pete PD and our St. Pete employees will go out and assess first damages, fallen trees, down power lines, and make that first push to clear our roads and restore power so that uh, our first responders can uh, begin uh, to move up to normalcy. That will allow Duke Energy as well to get out and start restoring power uh, to our community. Yeah, well said. That seems to be the story, at least in St. Pete tomorrow, with all the heavy trees down and the power lines. The cavalry ready to respond. Here you've got power crews staging downtown St. Pete. That's at Tropicana Field to get your lights back on. And as you heard the mayor say first thing this morning, that's what they'll be doing. Fox Regine's Catherine Holly there, live in Pinellas County for us tonight. Uh, Catherine, this is always the hardest part of the storm as it starts to pass. But especially tonight, we've got about another 12 plus hours before we get any sunlight here. Yeah, Mark, and the rain has not stopped, and we're still having some really strong wind gusts coming through. And that combination with the ground already being so saturated has just toppled trees and taken out power lines. So all these crews you see behind me will definitely be needed to help get the lights back on. Now, at last check, there are about 192,000 Duke Energy customers without power here in Pinellas County. About 10,000 crews have been mobilized from other states and staged at three locations. Tropicana Field, the Villages in Sumter County, and Richie Bros in Polk County. All of them waiting and ready to start hitting the streets to make repairs. Duke Energy tells me that work should start tomorrow, as long as winds are below 35 miles per hour and in areas that are not flooded. In one St. Pete neighborhood, a large oak tree missed nearby homes and cars, crashing into the power lines. The lights out there have been cut off since around 4.15. I have a feeling it's going to take a while. Well, because of the rain, you know, and wind and rain, and then coming and working on the power, uh, I'm just concerned that nobody gets, you know, hooked up with that in any way and gets hurt, you know. 
And we have seen dozens of intersections with failed streetlights, downed wires sparking with smoke. And officials say folks need to stay away from power lines that are down or sagging. They need to be considered live and energized along with anything that they are touching, like the tree limbs or trees or fences. We're told the first priority for Duke will be fixing large power lines and other infrastructure that will get the most lights back on to the greatest number of people the quickest. Now, Pinellas County officials are urging people to remain sheltering in place, saying that evacuation orders have not been lifted and breaks in the weather do not mean this storm is over yet. There are still a risk of flash flooding in the county and this continued rain could continue to weaken trees and other structures. So people still need to be heeding those warnings and staying inside and off the roads. Mark. No doubt about that. Catherine Holly live for us tonight on Tropicana Field. Catherine, thanks very much. And they're going to be huge to helping us here in the next couple of days. It's important, of course, to get the most up-to-date information that you have. If you lose power, you can listen to us, listen to Fox 13 on the radio. We're on Hot 101.5, 97X, the new alternative, and then 102.5, the bone as well. They are sharing our uh, air occasionally, so we appreciate all of them. Brings a whole new challenge, I think, to uh, weather forecasting, weather description, when all of a sudden you lose the visual aspect to it. And we have folks yes. hunkered down in, mm -hmm. in their houses and hanging on every word. Yeah, too. and it's listening to the radio, so we'll do our best. Let's talk about this landfall that was just north of uh, Fort Myers Beach. As you watch this video, most of that town is underwater. Um, you know, we know people who are saying they're talking 20 feet plus down there, right there. Mm. Uh, cars and homes submerged. Um, some homes have even floated away. And, and it's wild because a lot of folks stayed in their homes. I've seen videos of people on their second floors watching the water Ooh, flood wow. in. Yeah, like this right here. Look at this. This is Naples, the water rising there. This is actually at a hotel. The water almost to the second floor there, expected to keep going higher. This is another part of Naples where signs were floating down the street. Naples Fire Department even had to evacuate their fire station because of the rising water. They actually had to pull their fire truck out because it started smoking and they didn't want their station to catch fire. You can see it's up to their chest there. Hey guys, it's me again, your favorite hurricane girl over here in Naples. Um, now we have a truck issue and the guys are pushing the truck out of the bay. It's on fire. Because why, Chief? Uh, it seemed like the truck was going to catch on fire. It's smoking and uh, we didn't want the station to burn down. I mean, do you guys see the water is at their waist? Yeah. And that they're so calm. Wild. That's, that's I mean, they are. They're remaining right very calm. And you heard the fire chief say it right there. They had to push one of the trucks outside of the garage because of all the smoke rising from it. Imagine pushing that through that water. They were worried that the whole building was going to catch fire there. I mean, that's just incredible. The surge devastating on Sanibel Island, as you can imagine. That's just south of where the storm made landfall. It came up very quickly on the island, and, and we had heard that some folks were riding it out there on the island. Yeah, we heard of the 911 calls early in the afternoon, long before it actually made landfall. So we were thinking about them, and hopefully mm. hopefully they did make it. But, uh, I mean, have we ever seen a, an eye like this that strong, that big, especially in Florida, make landfall? It's very reminiscent of, of Michael. Yeah. You know, if folks, and it wasn't our area, obviously, but I remember that day when Michael hit up in the Panhandle in Mexico Beach, right. and it was Flattened the it, span yeah. of an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was no water and then 20 feet of water. In this case, that video was shot. I actually saw a time lapse. It was dry land, and 30 minutes later, it looked like that. Wow. That's how fast storm surge comes. I mean, that's the reason why we have evacuation zones. Catch us up to date, if you will, here at 1026 yeah. here. Uh, we know a lot of our viewers in the area are hearing us say it's getting better. Some are saying we're it's kind of on right. the edge. Where's the worst of our damage right now? Where's our winds that we should be seeing? Uh, you know, the, the winds are improving in some of the hardest hit areas from earlier today. So okay. Manatee and, and Sarasota County, it's okay. it's it's better. It's 40, 50 miles an hour. It's still a no walk in the park there, but it's better than the 100 miles an hour you had earlier. Worst of the weather right now, if you guys want to pop up the radar, is going to be in parts of Highlands County and parts of southeastern Polk County. That is where the heaviest rain is and likely still kind of the core of the strongest winds. Now, it's it's not as intense as it was earlier. You heard us say at the 10 o'clock update that the max winds anywhere in Ian were at 100. 
the observation sites for the most part in Highlands County and again, southeastern Polk County, 50, 60, maybe a couple of gusts close to 70. So it's one of those nights where it's going to be noisy outside because remember, you had a lot of wind earlier that probably snapped a bunch of branches, stuff's blowing around, and you still have tropical storm force winds through the night. You're going to have that stuff hitting windows. It's it's not going to be a fun night still, but it, we're gradually seeing improvement. Hey, we may even see a some dry weather for a time shortly uh, along the coast of Sarasota County. A little bit of sprinkle action, some drizzle, still very gusty winds down that way, but f finally a little maybe end to the rain after close to 20 inches of rain, guys, has fallen in uh, southwestern Sarasota County. And it looks like most of the rain, ironically, has been on the northwest side of this thing. It's yeah. interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about this as far as kind of the, the usual thing that you would expect is that eastern side, and typically in kind of messy tropical systems, mm -hmm. that's the case where you, you got the center almost naked and then everything has moved to the east of it. This is a well-defined storm. This is, Remember, this is nearly a Cat 5 when it made landfall. And, and with that kind of a setup, you know, it's kind of everywhere that we have the weather, but there's been some drier air getting sucked in on the eastern side of it. So it's raining as hard as it can and Avon Park and Sebring and you go down to Lake Placid, it's a sprinkle. You go drive a little further south down 27, it's, it's not raining at, at all. So big difference. Wow differences over a, a short swath of, of land, if you will. And what about, I know this is a difficulty right now, we don't want anybody yeah. going outside and taking pictures and right. risking anything yet, but from what, and I know we don't like to compare this to other storms, but what, where are you seeing the potential of having structural damage from some of the winds that you may have seen pass through, especially like in Polk County and those, those eastern Yeah, areas. yeah, it was speaking mostly to our inland spots here, it's really going to be, I, I think, parts of Hardy County, uh, maybe northwestern highlands, and then we did have some gusts upwards of 80 miles per hour north of Highway 60 uh, up towards Lakeland and Mulberry. There were a couple observation sites there, 80 to 85 earlier with some of those bands that kind of pivoted off the, the center of the storm, if you will. And certainly in those spots, if it's not a well-built home, you could have some issues with uh, mobile homes kind of being rolled off their, their cinder blocks, if you will, sometimes. Shingle damage, trees kind of landing on houses, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. you, your house is not going to blow away if it's a well-built home and this type of a thing, but it, it's certainly not fun when, when it's just so loud. But when the daylight comes up tomorrow and we start surveying a lot of this damage, there's definitely going to be some uh, issues, maybe like carports going flying, things like mm -hmm. that. The usual uh, through, suspect. Exactly, exactly. And that's not fun, but obviously, because it causes a lot of power outages when those kinds of things run into power lines and, and things like that it could be a week or two without power in some of these spots. So is this still just as slow moving? Because, I mean, we're watching this as a live radar and it doesn't look like it's moving. It, it doesn't. It's, 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 it's been over Fort Meade. And so, you know, all those folks yeah. that are in the Sebring and the Fort Meade area, they're they're the ones having the strongest winds. Is that correct? It's very it's spot on. And the center of the storm, what's left of the center of the storm it is kind of right over northern Highlands County. Six hours ago, it was over Port Charlotte. That's not very far. That's wow. about That's 55, 60 miles. Winds. Well, you think eight miles an hour. It's 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 a slow process in some of these spots. Not only run faster than the that. wind's <laughs> lasting that long, but the, the heavy <laughs> rain. For, yeah, it's it's rough. But we're we're here all the way all the way through, just like an Irma. You know, walking you through. I'll be on with Paul till two o'clock in the morning, and we'll keep it going from there. And one other note before we let you go here about the bay, uh, about Tampa Bay. We talked so much about potential surge a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the water with the reverse surge right. today. Uh, I know there's a lot of concern. People thought it would rush back in, yeah. but we still have that northern wind, right? So it's still going to kind of fight it. Wind is still north, and you're just not going to get the same type of surge impacts on the backside of the storm. You'll, you'll get a west wind tomorrow, but it's going to be a slow process. The water comes back up. Maybe it's a little higher than your normal tide, but it's not significant to cause big problems. Okay. We'll take, Tyler, you're awesome. Yeah, we'll take more good news. <laughs> you're awesome. No, really. It, I mean, watching you and Paul over there, they've just been do doing circles around the Weather Center for hours. Yeah, we're thinking about We've looked at every neighborhood, and we know a lot of you guys are having a rough time, uh, but we promise it's almost over for sure. We're getting there. Uh, let's talk about this hurricane hunters. Uh, they fly into the eye of these hurricanes to gather information, critical information that Tyler and Paul get to help you guys stay safe. Uh, they fly into the storm to do that. You've got to do that. you got to do it in a big plane, uh, and you got to strap yourself in. These are images from this evening's flight into Ian. Uh, you see the blue sky in the middle of the eye? The hunters call this one the worst flight they have ever experienced, and Fox's Madison Scarpino was on.
on one of those flights with Hurricane Hunters this afternoon, live in Biloxi, Mississippi, with her experience. And uh, Madison, I tell you what, it's the, this is not something that a lot of people on this planet get to experience. Uh, and you said you'd do this again? I really think I would because it was just that incredible. Yeah, it was really, really scary, but just a once in a lifetime experience that, again, I really do think I would do it again if I had the chance. But we were on that nine hour mission into the eye of Hurricane Ian. Was not smooth sailing. And at one point, we even dropped 1,200 feet in just a matter of seconds. Check this out. an idea of what we were dealing with. Here's some video shot during some of the terrible turbulence and what the crew called some of the worst weather they've ever seen. After taking off from the Air Force Base in Biloxi, the aircraft went in and out of the eye wall heading towards Florida four separate times. Turbulence was moderate initially, but after a few go-arounds, it became nearly out of control and the pilot called it a, quote, war story. The crew went on to say that the turbulence we all felt was not normal at all for these hurricane hunter flights and it's clear this isn't your average hurricane as well while this mission is dangerous it's incredibly important because going into the center of the storm is the only way the national hurricane center can get this critical data like wind speed where the storm is and how strong it is we got rocked I like to say like a boxer uh, the aircraft was uh, basically overmatched at one point uh, we were max power uh, trying to gain speed. We were basically diving, losing air. It, it was a mess. It, it was the worst thing you could uh, want to happen as a pilot. And these flights have been running a few times a day since the weekend, but the last scheduled mission landed a few hours ago. No more scheduled thus far. Back to you. And, and, and Madison, I, I saw one of, the, one of the other crew members there tweet a picture, I think, this afternoon. Um, give us a sense, too, what would it was like. I know you're clearly strapped in, and we know you're in great hands because uh, of these experienced pilots, but I heard there was coffee spilled everywhere. Things were thrown upside down. What was it really like to drop 1,200 feet like that? So it didn't matter how well you were strapped in. You definitely felt your body kind of rise into the air a little bit. I can't even imagine if the seatbelt was even just a little bit loose. It was, imagine the most turbulent commercial flight that you've ever been on times that by 100 and then mix in a little bit of a roller coaster drop in there too. It was insane, but super thrilling. I will say that, but again, terrifying. Well, there's not much cooler than an Air Force pilot. To hear him say we got rocked uh, really <laughs> says something. So uh, we appreciate you uh, sharing that with us today and hope you stay safe. Thanks very much. Madison Scarpino live in Biloxi, Thanks, guys. Mississippi. Absolutely. Aren't we lucky that we have people like that to do that? <laughs> not all of us would want to do it. I'll take a listen to this wind. Can you hear it? Kayla McGraw sent us this video. This is from Tampa. The city may have been spared from the worst of the storm, but we still experience those hurricane force winds there. And whenever there's a storm around, it's always interesting to see what happens to the water along Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa. Either it floods or it drains. Fox 13's Evan Axelbank was on Bayshore for us today. And I know, Evan, you saw a lot of people out there checking things out. But then at one point, the police officers actually shut it down, right? Yeah, they did. A couple things. First of all, uh, you're looking at somebody else who wouldn't be on that Hurricane Hunter plane. Uh, unbelievable interviewing story we just heard there. Uh, second of all, I want to let you know the conditions here, much more importantly, the conditions here on Bayshore and Howard are uh, much better than they were the last time we saw you about an hour and a half ago. Um, right now you can see that Things are just barely gusting. We had a strong gust come by um, maybe 30 seconds ago, but even that gust was nothing close to the sustained winds that we had seen um, a couple of hours ago. Right now, um, you know, things definitely feel like we're on the other side of this thing. And even though we didn't get the main part of the storm, and certainly it's much worse at Point South, um, it was hairy here for a little bit. We definitely wanted to stay inside. Um, you can see right now there are people walking out here on Bayshore Boulevard coming up here onto Howard Avenue. Here comes another wind gust, so we certainly hope those folks are okay. Um, it's certainly not advised for people to be outside right now, but um, it, is clearly, it is clear that it is possible to be outside right now. You see folks there walking in several different directions. So good news here in the city of Tampa. Let's show you what it looked like on, what it looked like on Bayshore a little while ago uh, before the sun went down. Here's some point of view video, POV video, 
from one person who walked out there. There were dozens who wanted to see this for themselves. Some walked hundreds of feet out to where the water started again, maybe as long as two football fields away from where I'm standing right now uh, and from the edge of that seawall there that most of us are familiar with. So that's incredible. Uh, the police did step in because it's obviously a safety issue given the unpredictability of wind and water. Police also didn't want cars parked on the grass median. Police came and closed off the area until all the sightseers left. You can see, though, they are back now. Uh, people say this was an unforgettable sight to see the water out of the bay because it's a view of Tampa that you seldom get to see. The power and how things are so fragile as far as with the storm going from one way to the to the other, from one side to the next. It's just amazing. Gone and drained, it's insane. It's like mind-blowing to see that that's, nature could do that. We do have video of one sightseer who needed help freeing themselves from the mud, which only got worse as the night went on. I'm sure right now, if you were to go out there, it would be almost impossible to walk, given how much water has fallen. Given what Tampa has faced tonight, things certainly could have been a lot different down here on Bayshore. Uh, obviously, we saw that storm turn at just the last minute there and head towards Fort Myers. And we definitely heard lots of well wishes from people here on Bayshore um, who just, you know, said um, they realized this could have been them, what we're seeing on all that video coming from Fort Myers, and how thankful they are that it wasn't, um, but at the same time saying that their thoughts and prayers were certainly with uh, the people of uh, southwest Florida because of what they have gone through here tonight. Um, and I know I've been talking for a long time here, but the question now, Ali, is, uh, and Mark, is when is that water going to come back in? Uh, the thinking from Paul Delegato um, and our weather team is that it's not going to come in in any kind of violent way, that it's going to kind of seep back in. And that would be good news because we certainly don't want to see storm surge come back in after the uh, relatively calm night that we've had at least out there on the water as that water has been pulled out to sea. Yeah, you know, Evan, listening to you talk about some of your conversations with folks out there, it, it seems like no one is, is feeling the regret of, oh, we had to evacuate or we had to leave our homes and it didn't even, it wasn't even as bad. I haven't heard any of that. And, and I think it's because of what we feel like we dodged and, and what we're seeing to, for our neighbors in the South. Have, have you heard anything from people who are saying that? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to say? You know, think about what people are going through. Um, but our best information showed that this hurricane was going to hit Tampa Bay and that it could have been awful for people here in Tampa Bay and that it almost was right. Just by the you know, just by the smallest of margins, a hundred mile difference um, changes everything. And so people are very well aware of that. Um, everybody clearly knows what could have happened here in Tampa. Um, it, it's hard to even to think about it, but we certainly can imagine it now, given what we've seen on that video. Many people are very grateful here tonight. I cannot imagine there's anybody who is um, sorry or who feels like they shouldn't have been evacuated when they were, because look at what happened down in Fort Myers, and certainly I can't even imagine people who didn't evacuate in Fort Myers um, what kind of challenges they have faced tonight. Um, my goodness, the damage on that front is only beginning to be, uh, to be uh, you know, uh, realized. Um, when the sun comes up, it could be a very sad story down there. Yeah, you're not kidding. Catastrophic for sure. All right, Evan Axelbank live for us in Tampa tonight. Evan, thanks. You know, we heard from Mayor Castor earlier this evening. She and other officials are urging residents to continue to shelter in place until the storm is gone. We have been fortunate to be able to continue to empty out our uh, stormwater retention ponds. And so we'll be able to take more rainwater than we anticipated with the original forecast. But we're still anticipating that we will see flooding and it will be sometime in the next 24 hours. All right. So Paul is joining us once again here. Paul? Hey, it was, I mean, it, Venice today and, and Northport and Englewood, that's the place in our viewing area that really stood out as having a tough see time. 19 inches of rain there. In yeah, Venice. and it just was so long. I mean, when I came into work today, or I don't know, it's like a day ago, but that was when the weather was moving on. So it was like a 12 to 14 hour event yeah, and where it was consistent. 
70, 80, 90 mile an hour right. winds, gusts to the widespread gusts, 100 to 105 in Sarasota County. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a situation where there's going to be a lot of blue tarps around. And of course, worse with the storm surge south. But it was especially bad, I think, obviously in Venice and Northport. And we, and, you know, we just forget the amount of growth that's been in that area the past, you know, 10 years. 75,000 people live in Northport. It's it's a big town, and, and that's where the heart of the hurricane really was. The eye wall kind of sat over them for a long time. Thankfully, around the immediate Bay Area, it was like 60, 65 mile an hour winds, mm -hmm. and then inland, it was the continuation of the heavy rain and, and the winds, 65, 70, 75 miles. Got a report from a friend, the Stony Point in Lakeland. Uh, they're getting it pretty good right now. Yeah, still getting and, it's, and it's tough, and it's always, you know, when you're lying in bed, it's 1042, and uh, it's dark. A lot of people don't have power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you hear stuff. I mean, you hear Scary. stuff You yeah. hear stuff hitting the house. You hear shutters going back and forth. And it is, it is unnerving to say, to say the very least. And then you hope when you get daylight that you take the trip around the house that you're not finding, you're not finding you know, missing, yeah. missing shingles and right. soft fit. And it's just the whole, broken. the whole thing is, mm -hmm. is just, is just tough, tough to deal with. Yeah, and, and you've been saying this, and I know a lot of people have been thinking it, but when daylight comes tomorrow, it's it's just going to be devastating, I think, to see what kind of damage Record, we, we, we know that the storm surge in Naples and Venice officially hit seven feet, which is a record high for them, but there's no, just not a lot of data down there, and it's you wouldn't think that those two observations would be the top. So easily, probably 10, 10 feet of water. And, you know, you take about, mm -hmm. I think if we had a 10-foot storm surge here in, in Tampa Bay, we would be reporting about the story for the next three months nonstop. We were thinking about it, you remember, on yeah. Sunday, and, yeah. and, and we were scared. Yeah, and it's just goes to show, and, you know, I, I think I made a clear enough point three or four days ago that I said I'm expecting additional track adjustments. I really feel for the people inland who, for three or four days, it was never really going to be an inland situation. It was always going to be, will it stay off the coast? Will it, will it come through Tampa Bay? So I, I think that our viewers inland... Um, Really, I'm not saying they were surprised, but they went from saying, "Well, it's going to be kind of a coast thing, and maybe maybe it'll go offshore." And all of a sudden, it's like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. this is coming our way!" And it just goes to show that I think the the forecasting overall is excellent. But these are these little minor changes that a 10, 15, I said 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, it all makes a huge it difference. Makes a huge, huge difference. difference, and especially when a storm is coming up mm -hmm. the coast and any little deviation. And I said this analogy: it's like it's like when you're driving a car down a highway straight and the road is straight, and you just touch the steering wheel a little bit, you end up in the sidewalk before you know it. It's kind of the same way with the hurricane paralleling yeah. our coast. All of a sudden, there's a little jog, and before you know it, it's on shore. That's kind of the analogy of how storms work when they parallel us right. from the south. Remember the initial cone, was it Sunday night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Barely had Coral Springs, barely had Fort Myers in yeah. the entire cone. So a lot of those folks, and then some south that weren't even in the cone, had... Yeah. And... Um, Hopefully and everyone do. does. And, yeah. and it's, it, it really, the, the folks down in Fort Myers where the storm surge flooding came, it wasn't like that's a big, we knew a day or two, here it comes. Right. And, and, and that right. was it. It's still ongoing now. I'll walk over and uh, get in front of the wall and we'll, we'll kind of do some data. And this is a look outside. Downtown Tampa can still have some, some lights. I mean, I, I don't know what the numbers are on power outages in the city, but just from the downtown Tampa can, um, I know there are power outages around South Tampa and around the city. When I go back on the data, it looks like in Hillsborough and Pinellas County, the peak winds are probably like 65. I think we, do we see a 72 in, in St. Pete, I think? Downtown St. Pete, for a time, I believe, hit above 70. And it, obviously, as you mentioned earlier, it, nothing to block the wind there off the yeah. water. So that was the highest observed in Pinellas County. Yeah, that's, so I'm thinking for the most part it was tropical storm force winds with occasional hurricane force. We never got into the core of the hurricane here in the immediate Tampa Bay area. This is a slow-moving process. Um, we have a new, let's see, the latest update we're waiting for the 11 o'clock update to see if there's any changes as far as the track goes, but we're kind of done with modeling now. We're just kind of waiting until we get the storm off our east coast and the weather begins to improve. But it's still really rough in, in most, if not all, of Polk County. Northern sections of Highlands County, from about Sebring to Avon Park, this is where winds have been probably 60, 70, gusts 80, 90. What's also interesting, Tyler, is that you move a little south of Sebring, and south of Highlands County today, for whatever reason, 
didn't get that much rain. I mean, if you watch me down by Lake Placid, down 27, it really isn't raining much, but it's from Sebring to this little area, this little wedge here, has been really problematic the past couple of hours, kind of hanging around, but it will improve. We go back to the West Coast, and, and let's go back to Venice, because finally, if you take a look at Venice and Northport, it finally stopped raining. Finally. Uh, you talk about an event that you'll talk about for a long time, folks. Uh, Northport, Venice, and all the way up 41 and, and 75. Th this line is going to slowly move from west to east. And as the night goes along and by daybreak, this line is going to be way over there. So by daybreak tomorrow, I think for all of us, we're going to be on the improve. And I, and I said this a couple of days ago, probably see the sunset. Uh, Thursday night with partly cloudy skies. Gusty winds from the west and northwest. Let's kind of go up the coast. Um, we have, I've had messages from a lot of people saying, okay, the water went out of the bay. It has to come back in. It will come back in. But the general rule is when weakening hurricanes, the tropical systems are moving away from us to the northeast, the return flow is not going to be enough to give us like a five or nine foot storm surge. I mean, th th that's not going to happen. Could it get up to one to two feet above normal and cause some minor flooding? I, maybe, but I, I just don't think when the storm is done that we'll be talking a lot about flooding from the Gulf. Storm surge flooding in Tampa Bay, that really is a landfall point and to the right thing, not a landfall point to the left thing. And that's the way it just kind of works with the rotation around the storm. Just light rain now. Uh, it's raining steadily through all of our northern counties. Uh, once in a while, a squall goes by, but it's simply just kind of a rainy and windy night. And if you're inside, if you've got power, it's just a night to kind of hear what's going on outside. There are some heavier bands that'll spin in from the east, but don't forget the storm continues to weaken and continues to kind of move away. So the improving process, though it is slow and it's kind of ponderous, if it will, uh, someone messaged me a little while ago, so this is the most ponderous storm ever. <laughs> it just won't end. But this is going to kind of slowly move Northeast. Never used ponderous in a forecast before. Uh, Lakeland, Bartow, um, we, I have shown multiple r uh, photos of Bartow the past month of flooding from thunderstorms. And now you've got more rain again. This is one of the wettest Septembers on record through Bartow and Lake Wales, where they've been stuck under some big storms. That's moving away. Can you imagine what the, the monthly rainfall total is going to be like for some of those spots? Well, you add in the 20. Yeah. that we had today. So yeah, you, right. you add in the 20 that we've had, so you, you're talking about, and this is the end of the month, that there could be 30 to 35 inches of rain for yeah. September. What is done right And this, this, was, this was the rainy season where the first two and a half months of the rainy season, it was nonstop, why won't it rain in my house? And I've always said, when you, when you, when you talk about the rainy season, you got to wait until October 1st. Complain about it when, you, when you've done the numbers from June 1st to say October 1st, you end up with nine inches of rain, then there's a problem. But eventually, now it's going to end up above average everywhere. Let's, let's talk about so far uh, that finger of rain where the models had this kind of up here as far as heaviest rains. They didn't do a good job with that, but they did pinpoint a solid line of ridiculous rainfall numbers. Uh, check it out. 16.4, 16.7, 17.8. Uh, how about 19 in, in Port Charlotte and, and 8.9 in Sebring? And with rainfall rates, seven to eight inches per hour, I mean, that, that is pretty incredible. Not a lot from Tampa north, which is kind of a breezy, rainy day in in Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus counties, and then around Tampa Bay, four inches in eastern Hillsboro, 4.6, uh, 2.4, 5.1, uh, and this will event, we're not done, so we're gonna add up uh, additional rainfall numbers uh, in this. When we do the, the storm recap, this is gonna be one we'll talk about uh, for a long time. Uh, rainfall rates, uh, it looks like it's diminishing a little bit uh, as far as the amount of purple, but when, when Tyler clicks on some of these numbers, um, 
that's that's six six inches per hour, seven inches per hour. I think is the upper limit on how hard it can rain. But we we really have put in some incredible numbers, and it's still coming down. The night will move along, and we're going to show you the 11 o'clock advisory. That may, is it in yet? Maybe let's let's we'll try. Right. Sometimes it comes in at 10:50, and maybe, let me let me. <clears throat> nope, not quite. Not yet. in quite yet. It'll be in the next five minutes. We're going to have that uh, at the, uh, the top of the 11 o'clock broadcast. New uh, tracking information. We'll get an update on the wind seed. I'm going to say, tell. I'm going to go 95. But what about are at 100 as of the 10 o'clock? Yeah, 90, 95. I say 90, 95. Probably the top number. We've gone from 155 to 100. That's progress. And then we'll wait for the 11 o'clock advise you probably 90 to 95 and it'll continue to diminish and probably by maybe 4 or 5 a.m. it should be a tropical storm somewhere kind of east or near Orlando in about six or seven hours. So it's actually for those of you inland that are still hearing the wind howl outside your window. That tropical storm moment for sure. Paul seen a bit. Ian's powerful winds brought this tree down along Bill Shoals in Hillsborough County, blocked the road there and was a big one. Then several men came out, started pulling the tree out of the road, cleaning up the debris on their own. That debris could have posed a danger for neighbors, though. The powerful winds brought this tree down in Sefner. We're going to see a lot of this tomorrow, and we've seen a lot tonight. It's blocking Taylor Road and MLK Boulevard. All of the down trees are a big reason for the uh, power outages, of course. Across Tampa Bay, they pull the down. And remember, not all those breakers get thrown, so some of those lines can be hot. Don't go anywhere near them. Be very careful where you step. Tampa police came across this huge tree down along West Francis Avenue. This is not far from downtown. Look at that. That's a gorgeous old tree, too. Took several power lines down with it, and it came close to very uh, quite a few homes. Now is the time still to shelter in place, though. Watch out for these trees. Do not go out, especially at night. Gosh, they are massive, aren't they? Well, this video shows the rain and wind pummeled Placida in Charlotte County as Ian slammed on shore. You can just see the trees blasted by those winds. Trees down, metal debris flying. Emergency officials wanted people inside and sheltering in place because the storm gives no quarter. This is also out of Placida. This video here, this is a picture actually of a storage building that collapsed at a marina. This is the Gasparilla Marina, which is just south of Inglewood, and you can see there it is just ripped apart. Well, you know, our local sports teams have been impacted by Ian. In fact, the Buccaneers were among those who had to evacuate on Tuesday. Our sports director, Scott Smith, walked into the studio just a few minutes ago, and we all said, oh, hey, hey, Scott, it's good to see you. We I've been waiting sports. for hours for this moment right here, I know, so it's great to join you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we now finally have a little bit of an appetite for sports, so let's talk about it. Yeah, no change as of yet. Uh, the Bucs and the Chiefs, they are still scheduled to play Sunday night at Raymond James Stadium. However, the NFL has a contingency location set. So if not Tampa, then Sunday's game will be played 1,500 miles away, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota. It's, of course, the home of the Minnesota Vikings, who happen to be playing their game this week against the Saints in London. And so the venue is, of course, open. The league is going to wait until the storm has passed before assessing what to do. It may take as late as Friday later in the week to determine that. Uh, Chiefs head coach Andy Reid says that they'll fly wherever they need to when word finally does come down. Uh, the Bucks they have been down in Miami since yesterday. The team relocated down to Miami at the Dolphins facility there. Uh, they, they didn't just send players and coaches either. They sent family members of the players. They sent grandmas and family pets and everybody, you name it. So a pretty big relocation operation there for the Bucks. They had also considered going up to West Virginia this week, but Miami was just kind of the easier move for everyone involved given the size of the group. Todd Bowles knows the priority right now may not be football. First of all, you know, our thoughts and hearts go out to everybody in Tampa that's still there and hoping that they recover well and it doesn't hit them very hard. You know, that, that's the biggest thing. What we do is really small entertainment for people that go through a lot of rough things. And hopefully it, it's a bigger than just a football team.
One player who knows the dangers of a hurricane firsthand, Leonard Fournette in the New Orleans native, was a child when Hurricane Katrina had struck the city. He says that the memory of what happened 17 years ago, while still vivid, has given him a little different perspective going through an event like that. At the time, you know, I was a kid, you know, and um, didn't really understand and know how serious the situation was. But now as an adult, you know, with my own kids, and I'm older, you know, I understand the the seriousness of the whole situation. When the hurricane happened, I was probably eight or nine. So, you know, I just know how it was, you know, having to walk through that water, you know, I mean, you know, for your grandmother and grandfather just to pass through, uh, looting, things like that. So I know how serious it is. So I know how it can turn for the worst. So I'm just happy uh, we got ourselves out there, our families, and uh, everyone is safe. And uh, we will have more uh, coming up as we figure out if, if there's going to be any type of relocation effort. But uh, it seems at this point that it would be all systems go for a Sunday night game at 820 kickoff between the Chiefs and the Bucks at Ray J. Uh, we do have a couple baseball notes tonight. Uh, if you guys are up for it. the Rays, they lose in 10 innings, two to one to oh. the Guardians. Okay. But it was it, it was the debut of Tyler Glass now. And he looked really good. Three innings, uh, gave up a run and two hits, three strikeouts. So it's been a while. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. And then uh, Aaron Judge hit his 61st home run, matching did. that of Roger Maris. Good for him. Yeah. And we're glad Tyler's back. We're going to need him in the Thanks next couple good weeks. Good news. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll take it, Scott. We appreciate it for yep. sure. It was really good to see you, Scott. Yeah. You too. Dozens of passengers are stranded at Orlando International Airport because of Hurricane Ian. The airport suspended all operations earlier today. The stores gated up, check in lanes. empty. It's a ghost town. The only people left in the airport are those whose flights were canceled at the last minute. And they're now being asked to leave and take shelter. The scariest part for me isn't necessarily being stuck here as much as like we only planned for a certain amount of days. When you have a little kid with you, he takes top priority. So when he starts running low on stuff, that's when it gets kind of terrifying. Certainly scary with a little one. Exteriors of the Orlando airport have been protected with sandbags as rain and wind gusts come through there. We do have some more video coming out of Southwest Florida as Hurricane Ian was coming ashore. This is from Joel Franco showing storm chasers and weather reporters on Tamiami Trail in Punta Gorda. Uh, you can see one on the street, signs as there has been over, and he may be hard to recognize. We're going to show you this here in a second. Uh, there's, there's, there he is. That is Weather Channel's Jim Cantori, nearly getting knocked over by a large tree branch. Uh, he's done this before, though. He's managed to stay on his feet. He needed to grab that sign uh, to keep from blowing away, though. Um, it is it is not uh, for the faint of heart and not for uh, those who want to show somebody what they can do. He's been doing that mm. for a long time. But, but it does give you a sense of those wins. Tell you what, they're really something. Well, do you remember when Jim Cantore was on Clearwater Beach earlier <laughs> this week? Uh, that was a bad sign for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and sadly, it was a bad sign for Fort Myers yeah. and folks. So we're thinking about all of them for sure. We are going to take a quick break. Just a quick one. We need to. We want you to stay with Fox 13, though. We are not done. We've got an update from Paul coming up in a bit about what you can expect here in the next few minutes. So sit tight. We'll be right back. There is an upside to inflation for savers. I-bonds, those are the bonds with rates linked to the rate of inflation, are up. But before you invest, remember you can't withdraw money for a year. You'll lose some interest if you withdraw cash before five years. And like inflation, the rate will fluctuate. I'm Steve Noviello. That's my two cents. Spend it wisely. I'm Heather Sullivan with Sullivan Smart Sense. Did you know you can use Google Maps or Apple Maps to save time and gas? You enter your destination and they can both show you the shortest route to get there. But they can also show you the best time to leave based on expected traffic. So you burn less time and burn less gas sitting in traffic. You have a responsibility to respect yourself and to make sure that other people are respecting you. Because love and respect are not the same thing. I can love you and not respect you. And here's how you know if somebody respects you. Loving you is about wanting you, but respecting you is about honoring you. 
When I respect you, I only give you the things that I would give myself. And if I won't give it to me, I shouldn't give it to you. That's what it's all about. So don't just ask for people to love you. Make sure they respect you. It'll last longer. I promise. I'm Steve Noviello inviting you to click on Consumer, the latest retail environment to see price hikes, thrift stores, while inventory is almost entirely donated. Folks say they still have to pay for operational costs, and those prices are up. According to the Salvation Army, staffing, utilities, and rent have all jumped in cost. But while some items are being priced higher to help pay the bills, they say there will always be the staple deals like dollar t-shirts and $5 jackets. Spend smarter, live better, right here. A lot of people in the world who are waiting to be chosen. A lot of people hoping that somebody will come along and sweep them off their feet. Truth of the matter is this. You've already been chosen. When you woke up this morning and life nudged you and the universe decided to allow you to enter into the space of existence and living, you were chosen at that moment. You don't have to wait for somebody to come along to deliver you because you don't need to be rescued. You are exactly the miracle that you've been waiting for. How about that? Good evening again here at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Wilson. Welcome to Fox 13's continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. And I'm Allie Corey. It is wonderful to have you with us. Hopefully you and your family and your friends are are doing well as you hang out with us for the duration of this storm. Hurricane Ian making its way north now through the state of Florida. Yes, almost there. It is still time, though, to shelter in place here in Tampa because we still are experiencing strong winds. Maybe you felt them in your neighborhood. So we do want to get right over to Paul, who's Mm. been tracking this for us. So, Paul, what are we still in for tonight. Well, I tell you, Allie, it's it's just it's slow improvement. Uh, Tyler and I are going will be 90 or 95 on the 11 o'clock advisory. Uh, 90. So we've gone down to a count one. So the weakening process continues. We want to get the speed up, but we can't do anything about that. We know that the weakening process will continue. I'd like to see that 18 miles an hour, not eight. Eight's pretty slow, but we're moving along. I mean, we're getting into almost to the East Coast now. I'm still getting messages from viewers in Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands County, and some of Polk County saying, when is it going to stop? Please, Paul, make it stop until we get this off the East Coast. But, you know, you're not getting hurricane force winds now. The vast majority of the viewing area has winds of tropical storm force or a little bit below that, and that is progress. It's loud, it's disturbing, it's unnerving to be in your home and and just listening to the constant sound outside. But as long as your house is well built, you're going to make it through this okay, especially now where the top winds are not. Let's put this in motion and see if there's any change on the track. Not really. Uh, why don't we let's see what's going to happen in this long term, Tyler? I mean, we, we really South Carolina. Let's kind of pivot this up. Yes. South Carolina is going to have a a tropical storm, maybe make landfall south, maybe up by Charleston, or south of Myrtle Beach, and then kind of dying up over Charlotte, and then up towards Galax, Virginia. So this will be a big. Of course, that's that. Let's kind of slide it back down and uh, show that the progress from Cat 1 and then to 8 a.m. tomorrow, it's a 65-mile-an-hour tropical storm off the East Coast, and, and then that will be it as far as the weather goes. The winding down of the storm is certainly a slow process. Remember, this was not a Cat 1 or a Cat 2 making landfall. If we had a Cat 1, Cat, cat 2 making landfall, then it would be a tropical storm now. It's just going from 155 to below 70, just just takes time. And and you can see, though, now, when we look at at the radar presentation, there's certainly no more eye. It's just kind of a mass of weather. And really, everybody in Polk County right now has very heavy rain and strong winds. There really isn't any exception. So if you're watching me in Polk County, we know that every single one of you is having it tough because this is all solid yellow and red. And there's wind in here, 50, 60, 70. I know it doesn't seem like it's going to stop, but it will, especially late tonight when this kind of gets up off to the east of Orlando, east of the Turnpike. Around Tampa Bay, we're getting improvement. Look at Pinellas now, where from Gulf to Bay, south, it isn't really raining much. And then coastal Sarasota and Venice, 
it really isn't raining much at all. And we're, I mean, we're so happy for these people that along the coast that really had a rough go over today. Uh, and now Tampa is just light rain. And Eastern Hillsboro, Fishhawk, Lithia, Brandon, Plant City, uh, all the way up to New Tampa, the rain bands are trying to kind of move back in, but the storm is slowly moving away. So the improvement will continue around Tampa Bay. Not bad, Citrus, Hernando, Pasco. Our three northern counties kind of did okay today. Yeah. It, w- it was no picnic, but really the whole day was squalls where it would rain. And again, I'm, some of you certainly lost power in our three northern counties, but as far as having any significant damage, there may have been some trees down. Probably did okay overall, especially when you think what happened down by Fort Myers, and we'll take this and this and this all day. And you can see the bands trying to move back to the west, but as the night rolls around and the storm continues to weaken, uh, let's zoom in maybe just one more time and get really into Polk County close as we can. And, and just take a look at all these towns, uh, Hillcrest, Lake Wales, Frostproof. This is really bad. I mean, they really, this is really coming down. This is where rainfall rates are six, seven inches per hour, and winds are probably gusting 60, 70. Bartow, all the way back down to where else? We have Fort Meade here. We've got Winter Haven. We have Auburndale. We have Lakeland. Nearly the entire county is getting probably the worst of it right now. It's going to last a while longer, probably until about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. But by daybreak tomorrow, when you wake up and kind of walk around the yard and kind of assess the damage, hopefully you have none, then we'll be on the improve. But again, the process is slow, and we're certainly heading uh, in the right direction. That's really about it. Uh, We'll be back with another weather look in about 10 to 15 minutes, but for now, let's go back to the news desk. All right, Paul, thanks very much. Think about our friends in Polk County. And now that Hurricane Ian has moved inland, folks in Polk are seeing a lot of debris from the high winds. Fox 13's Jordan Bowen is there, joining us now live from downtown Bartow. Uh, Hi there, Jordan. Uh, Paul said they still got uh, there quite a bit of uh, maybe a couple more hours worth of these winds. Yeah, Mark, this storm has not let up since we've been out here in Bartow. We've been out here since about 8 o'clock this evening, and this strength of the storm has maintained. The winds have maintained. The rain has really picked up since we checked in with you at 9 o'clock this evening. I'm going to step out of the shot so the shot can zoom down. This is the corner of Wilson and Main Street, and in a second you're going to see this large black awning with a metal frame nearly on the sidewalk. That is the Cookie Jar Bake Shop at the corner of Wilson and Main Street in downtown Bartow. We witnessed the winds rip that off the shop, twist and turn that metal. The sounds with these buildings echo throughout this little downtown. When you hear uh, debris, you'll hear dings and bangs every once in a while. But I can say those winds have maintained its strength here in downtown Bartow. Just to run you guys through some of what we've seen so far, uh, at the Hampton Inn near Old Eagle Creek, Eagle Lake Road, we witnessed a transformer blow up around 5 o'clock this evening. A small fire started. And then since then, the winds have been the main story. We've seen awnings ripped off at the Bartow Shopping Center right near the hotel. We did check in on the Peace River uh, around 7 or 8 o'clock. The waters had definitely risen, but not to the point of the bridge where the cars were driving. There was at least 10 feet of uh, no water up to the bridge. And as soon as Scott here zooms back and I want to walk you guys through just some of the, the, the debris that we've been seeing here uh, in downtown Bartow. Take a look at this large tree branch here. It's debris like this that we are starting to see here in the last few hours, uh, just ripped off from trees like this one here uh, right above us, as you can see. And also the uh, this metal, uh, metal like this, we've seen a lot of these pieces here And we're seeing, looking at the tree right now, you can see that large tree, the branches waving back and forth. The winds have really maintained uh, since we checked in with you at 9 o'clock. And if you look around the streets, it's just piles and piles of branches and leaves. Uh, They continue to pile up since we've been out here. And I wanted to show you here this large piece of metal. It's roofing like this that we've seen several pieces of metal uh, scattered across downtown here. Uh, But... 
as you can see, the lights are still on, the power is still on. They may have a generator here in downtown Bartow, uh, but it has the storm has maintained its strength down here. The rain continues uh, to pelt us here, uh, and that's kind of the latest right now here in downtown Bartow. And Jordan, it looks pretty. And quiet. I just want to say we are. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say we are in a safe location. We're under a concrete building with an awning, so we have protection on both sides of us. And it's debris like this that officials want to make sure why people aren't out walking. This can just whip right down the street um, and really be deadly. Yeah, that was my next question. It looks like it's pretty quiet behind you. We're getting reports of trees down um, all over the viewing area, but I would imagine they're quite a bit uh, down not far from where you are. So uh, we hope you stay safe. We know you will, and uh, we'll check back with you in a bit. Jordan Bowen live for us right now in Bartow. Well, you know, a big danger in our inland counties is the wind. Take a look at this tree. You can see it right now. Boom, it just topples over in the strong winds in Winter Haven. This is along 21st Street. Now, thankfully, it just fell in the other direction. It didn't, did not hit a nearby house, but that has happened all over the place. Take a look at this giant branch came down. This is on Bell Shoals Road in Lumsden and Hillsborough County. The homeowner whose tree it is says it wasn't really long before Good Samaritan pulled up and helped pull it right off the road. Well, the wind just blew it down. The tree's kind of old. You can tell how all the limbs, even the little limbs, got all that fungus stuff on it. Yeah. So that's what brought it down, I guess. And everybody was driving around here, so that's, that's okay. So these guys came along and... Yeah, he just stopped by. I mean, it happened uh, probably not even a half hour ago. They had about 10 or 12 cars that have gone by so far. And he stopped and had a solution to it, took care of the problem. Don't you love seeing that? Neighbors helping neighbors. You can't beat it. Tough times like this brings out the kindness in others, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this in the coming days. And Hurricane Ian now moving up the middle of Florida right now, and you're probably hearing the winds whipping by your house as you shelter in place. Let's go to Manatee County, where they started feeling Ian's impacts earlier today. And Fox 13's Janae Lewis has been there all day, joining us live again tonight from Bradenton. Hi there, Janae. Um, what are some of their biggest concerns? I know, obviously, they've got coastal issues, but you guys saw a lot of wind there as well. A lot of wind and we are still getting those gusts coming in even at this late hour tonight as well as concerns for flash flooding across Manatee County. So that's going to be the big thing. So it's important to emphasize we are not out of the woods yet. It's not appropriate or the time to come out and try to start exploring. I want to show you some video that we captured late tonight in downtown Bradenton, just showing some of the conditions here. And I checked in with county leaders. They say they are starting to hear reports of trees down in neighborhoods, but they haven't had the opportunity to check them out due to the conditions and being able to safely do so. There are also a number of down power lines contributing to those outages, which are currently impacting tens of thousands of people across Manatee County. Because of that, they discourage people from going out and about before it's safe to do so. Don't be a disaster tourist. There is there will be much work that must be done after the winds leave and we're able to get out and do our assessments. What will slow our efforts down is if everybody gets on the road, drives around to look for yourself about what damage has been done. And they're hoping to begin those assessments in a matter of hours, honestly, if conditions continue to improve. But right now, everyone should be sheltering in place. The good news is there are thousands of crews across the state, including here in Manatee County. They're stationed here. Their trucks are here. The crews are here. They're ready to go out, but they have to wait until it's safe enough for them to do so. So really, we're expecting soon as the sun comes up and we can really get an idea of the magnitude of the situation here and the damage. We're expecting that to happen then, and it's going to be an all-hands-on-deck scenario. I'm sure it will. We're talking hundreds of thousands of people, um, maybe more, that are without power. We know a good chunk are there with you in Manatee County. So, Janae Lewis, live right there. Janae, thanks. Well, the worst is over in Sarasota, at least when it comes to the wind, and it was pretty rough for most of the day. That's where we find our Fox 13's Brianna Arredondo. She is live for us in Sarasota. So, Brianna, with the worst being sort of behind us there in Sarasota, what would you say is the main concern really for the rest of the night? 
Yeah, well, right now they're definitely kind of focusing on what we've been hearing uh, just from those other surrounding counties. You know, they really want people to continue to stay inside of their homes and let these emergency crews go out overnight, go out <laughs> into the morning and start clearing those roads, getting everything ready and safe before people can really start going back to their houses and seeing, you know, the damage for themselves. They really want uh, folks to be able to give these emergency crews time to work. Um, I can tell you that they are going to be starting to head out tomorrow morning um, around 9 o'clock. The public works uh, here in Sarasota County, they're going to start checking infrastructure, seeing what's damaged, as well as turning water back on so that way they can get those boil water notices going for people to be able to start using their water once again. Um, fr first responders are concerned about flash flooding. Um, that, of course, is, is uh, a concern with all of the rain that we've had, of course, with this hurricane. Um, they really won't get a good look at exactly all of the damage that has been done until it starts to become daylight and they can get a really good sense that needs to be done for cleanup moving forward. Um, the emergency management chief says that Venice, Inglewood, and Port Charlotte uh, got the worst of the storm, and so they're really hoping that people in those areas uh, heeded warnings about evacuating. Um, they are going to be starting their rescues and uh, any recovery efforts as well tomorrow morning. They're going to be heading out around 3 o'clock in the morning um, to kind of get that first round of emergency responders out there. Um, a lot of people have been calling the emergency operations center here, you know, checking to see, you know, when can they go back to their homes? Some people even calling to ask, when can I go back to work? Um, really, uh, you need to be focused on uh, staying where you are. That is the message that county officials are saying that they really want folks to understand at this point. Um, what helps them to get a scope of the storm's impact, though, um, they are asking folks to call 311. That way they can kind of get those reports coming in um, if you don't have an emergency. All right, Brianna Arredondo live for us tonight. Flooding, you know, we know we're going to see down trees and down lines. We just want people to go ahead, call us, report those things. We will get them down to our, our operations team downstairs so they can coordinate and have people get out there. 42. And of course, the concern now is what happens once it starts to heat up tomorrow. Uh, you know, people who have their power out right now, you are going to be uh, starting to get hot. There isn't going to be any air conditioning running. And so um, county officials want you to continue to try to stay hydrated until those power crews can get that power turned back on. If you have any generators that you're planning on running, make sure that you do those outside at least 20 feet away from your house and it not inside of a car garage or a car port because, of course, there is that serious risk of getting carbon monoxide poisoning. A lot of good advice there because we know a lot of people are probably using those generators. All right, Brianna, thank you. Well, the whipping wind is going to cause more power outages than we've already seen. The men and women, though, who are going to get your lights back on are standing by. They are waiting to work. Uh, we're joined on the phone now by Duke Energy spokesperson Anna Gibbs. Hi there, Anna. Uh, we thank you for your time. We know I'm just looking at some numbers, uh, and, and, I, uh, and I know we don't want to bore our audience with a bunch of numbers, but we're well over a million people without power tonight, and about, what, 200,000 of them are your customers. Uh, what's going to happen tomorrow? I know you guys are anxious to get out there and uh, start working. Well, we have already about 10,000 vegetation management and damage assessors that are standing by on, and those crews are at Tropicana Field, the Villages, and, and Ritchie Brothers out in Cole County. We get them as close as we can to the storm, of course, without getting in its path, but they're close enough so they can rapidly re respond right after the storm passes and it's safe, that means 35 miles per hour or less on the wind, and of course, uh, you know, away from flooded areas, and that is when we're able to go ahead out in the field again and start repairing those power lines. And what are you telling your customers at this point? Should we just, should they just assume that you guys know about the power outages, or should they still be reporting them and calling them in or, or dialing them up or reporting them online if they can? What, what would you tell customers who are still without power tonight who may not know if theirs has been reported? We would still ask our customers to let us know, and that means you can text it to us, you can call us, we have an app, uh, whatever way that you're most, uh, you know, feel comfortable calling it in, please let us know. We don't mind that you go ahead and just make us aware. So, and even more importantly, please make sure that we have your correct contact information. That means your email, your phone number, because we can proactively communicate with you once these uh, outages, we start repairing these outages, we can give you estimated time of restoration. It's really important because 
whether it's by phone, by text, or even email, we have ways that we can proactively tell you the causes of that restoration. So if you have your correct uh, phone number, your correct email, we can go ahead and give you that information. And, you know, likely that will be started tomorrow. That'd be great. That is uh, Anna Gibbs, who is with Duke Energy tonight, where they've got uh, over 200,000 people alone without power, but they're going to be working to get it back on force. Anna, thanks very much. Well, you know, the Thank strong you. winds have really taken out a lot of trees across the Tampa Bay area. This video here is from West Francis Avenue in Tampa. Look at that massive tree that just completely uprooted there. Fox's Madeline Rivera is live for us here in Tampa tonight. She has the very latest on the conditions. And I know when we checked in with you earlier, Madeline, you were kind of blowing to one side and just getting pelted with the rain. It does look slightly more pleasant out there this evening. Would you agree? <laughs> Oh, yes, it was tough. Well, that's because we had to go inside into this little alcove a few hours ago just to get some refuge from the rain and the wind. We were just getting pelted by the raindrops over there. It felt a little painful at times as it hit my face. So, But even here in this alcove, you can probably see the wind still here whipping things up. And people here are being reminded to stay vigilant because flash flooding, a big concern for officials. Tampa was expected to see between 18 to 20 inches of rainfall, a storm. When you put it to context and compare it to other parts of southern Florida that were hit with a, that got the brunt expected to see between 18 to 20 inches of rainfall, a storm surge of about four to six feet, which when you put it to context and compare it to other parts of southern Florida that were hit with a, that got the brunt of this hurricane, yes, it's low were compared to that, but it's still pretty significant in this area. You can probably see, as you guys are very familiar with downtown Tampa, usually a pretty busy area. Right now, almost completely empty. Earlier tonight, we did see some people coming in and out of that hotel behind us where you see the windows and the doors have been boarded up. But I would say it's really been quiet over the last couple of hours or so. It seems like people are really heeding the warnings to just stay indoors, shelter in place until the storm passes through. I was also in touch with someone from uh, the mayor's office, and they were telling me that so far they have had no major emergencies. There were a few fires from downtown. Power lines, but they say nothing that they couldn't handle. And they also tell me that emergency responders are still going out there handling any calls uh, because, as we have been mentioning all day, if at some point they had reached, the winds had reached 50 miles per hour, they would have stopped responding to those calls to stay off the roads. But as of right now, they say they are responding to calls. So that's the latest news, Madeline, especially considering that, uh, you know, our meteorologists here are saying has sort of blown through. Have you seen any any major damage just when you were out and about today? Was it mostly just down trees? I did take a drive through some parts of Tampa hours and hours ago, early in the afternoon, and I did see some down palm leaves, but nothing really crazy. I mean, if you walk down the street over over here, I saw a downed barricade, but I would say as I would assess the surrounding area over here, it looks okay, but then again, of course, I haven't been able to see the other parts of the surrounding area, just whatever was close to was not whatever I saw earlier in this afternoon, and I'm sure things have changed since I last saw it, but that's what I can tell you from our area right now and what I've been able to observe over the last few hours out. Well, we certainly appreciate your reporting and welcome to Tampa. We hope you've enjoyed your stay thus far. Uh, stay safe and hopefully you can get some rest tonight, Madeline. Thanks. What a welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, President Biden contacted several mayors who are in Hurricane Ian's path, offering up any help that they need as the wrath of Hurricane Ian continues to unfold into the evening. The storm's impact really already spreading well beyond the coast. Another problem, usually at a time like this, is that the nation could tap into the strategic oil reserve, which is used during times of emergency, and FEMA is keeping close tabs. It all depends on what the impacts from this storm might bring, um, and so we need to do those assessments after the storm passes. So officials don't know whether there is enough supply to cover the rest of hurricane season. That's because the nation already tapped into the reserves this year as the government works to keep gas prices on the downswing. Oil reserves are at lows that we haven't seen since 1984. And I've seen quite a few pumps that have been either saran wrapped up or they've got those out of order. 
with the I think, signs I on think them? most are, certainly. I couldn't find I couldn't find one at all today. Yeah. Uh, and they're probably going to be closed a good bit of tomorrow, so keep that in mind. So minimize your driving. Right. Yeah. Save what you have in your vehicle, for starters. And then also try to use your generators sparingly and try and save it because right. um, we do have enough to go around, but not all at the same time. <laughs> you hope it's not a week and a half yeah. in spots without power. As it could be in some places. Like, yeah, it certainly yeah. could. Um, we're getting to a point here where we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in a lot of spots, and we certainly avoided a, a, a big problem here in Tampa Bay. I think you know when you have 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, were kind of our peak in Tampa and over into Pinellas County. That's that's manageable through this. Mm-hmm. When you think about what everybody else went through, so uh, starting to see uh, the wind speeds come down a bit.